Hey folks, how's it going? So uh, we, at the end of the D&D stream, we started talking about guns and gun control. And uh, I figure that we'll carry on the conversation. So I'm joined by Arch, Dev, uh, and that's it, actually, Arch and Dev. Uh, thanks for being with me, guys. I, I hear that you're uh, all interested in talking about guns in America. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in committing essential suicide on the internet by touching a subject <laughs> in which there is no winning. <laughs> I think I kind of got this when I um I read um what was it Fire and Fury, uh, I had I had a lot of like hardcore Trump partisans uh, annoyed at me very annoyed at me and I lost like five hundred subscribers from it but I mean I mean I'm a I'm a I'm a full throated supporter of Trump but I'm not going to pretend that he doesn't have massive problems because he does and you know that's just life and this this is going to be much the same way I imagine. Um, so, okay, let's let's start with the um, the moral case, shall we? Uh, should the government be able to tell you that you can't own a gun? Uh, yeah, that's the fucking easy one. <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> it's, it's oh, oh, the government, the, the government doesn't want me to have guns. Weird. That's that's such a coincidence. That's kind of the reason I wanted guns in the first place. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I personally am going to say no, it shouldn't. I I can see the argument for why it should, but I, I I'm a person who likes government. I think government is the best way to keep a civilized society running and giving all of the good things we want, like you know, water, electricity, roads, etc. But I don't think necessarily we should trust it completely. And whilst I personally fucking hate the militia argument, oh yeah, we can fight the modern fucking army of militias. No, you fucking can't. You you probably can't. But the thing is, having an armed populace is not the same thing as fighting a war against your own army. It you is know? a deterrent. And exactly. I think it is actually a good deterrent. I, I agree. I, I agree it's also a good deterrent. Um, and I mean... Like, uh, I, if if we're talking like political philosophy, I mean, in you know, the the, the purpose of liberalism is to establish um, good and just government that is conforms to the will of the people and is governed by the consent of the governed. Um, and if you don't have that, then I agree with Locke. I think you have a duty to rebel, and to be able to do that, you're probably going to need to be armed. So. I, I really don't think the government should be able to take away every every firearm the population can have, because otherwise that literally puts it out of the reach of them. And then you're you're well, it's not necessarily inevitable, but it's I, I feel less comfortable about it. Don't you mean that you agree with Loki? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> but to be to be fair, that was um, Warsky's mistake, not mine. I don't really <laughs> blame Locke for something. <laughs> Something that someone did with a low IQ intervention. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh god! That's a whole other f fucking topic. Um, I kind of disagree with you a little bit. I think that an, an armed population like the United States probably can go toe to toe with the American military. Oh, I don't think god, they want to. I don't. I don't think either side wants to. But I think that if they had to, they could. I, I think. I think that's unlikely. I don't. I don't think um, an, a, a militia in America or anywhere else probably. Uh, is going to win a battle, like an open battle against a, a modern military, but no. they, they, it's it's going to be a guerrilla campaign that will never yeah. end. Yeah, uh, that's that's what I mean. Yeah, I, I, the because... thing is, I, I don't accept that either. Okay, guerrilla campaigns have proven relatively effective, and I say relatively with yeah, yeah. one hell of a confusion mix in countries like Afghanistan and Iraq, vast empty countries with very little infrastructure. Etc. Etc. Against a very hardy population, the Afghani's been fighting off invaders for what the last hundred and twenty fucking years. Yep. I just cannot imagine that the modern day first world American has the sheer fucking grit to sustain such a campaign. Oh, I, I don't want to say they don't because I don't know. I think there are probably a bunch of them who who actually do. I mean, America is a very large place with very open spaces. And uh, and but the yeah. thing, it, it's not even necessarily that. I mean, the thing with the Americans is they're going to blend in with the regular population, you know. And so when you've got uh, the occupation forces of the American government occupying whatever area they need, you know, there'll be just a you know a gunshot from somewhere, someone will die, and then no one's going to know where it came from. And then you know that gets them afraid, and that gets them 
you know it's it's all about psychological warfare guerrilla warfare so you know it is and it it makes the place ungovernable because the american forces then have to become uh even more authoritarian than they are and then basically it'll end up going like iraq you know and it, all it would re really require is um sort of fortitude on the part of the population themselves to to you know want to continue resisting a tyrannical government which honestly i'm sure they would i, I would be amazed if they just caved to, to the bloody <laughs> to, to tyrannical american government I mean, like you're either going to get the left or the right. Whoever the the president taking the reins of power is, um, the the opposite number are going to resist until the end. I imagine. I, I'd be amazed if they didn't. Actually, I think the right would have a a better chance. But even that, we you're talking about such a minuscule percentage of the population. That's true. That's true. So we'll get we'll get to some super chats in a minute. I just want to like go through our ideas first, and then uh, we'll we'll introduce your your points, lads, because we, we're we're non Americans and we want to talk from a non American perspective for a moment. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I I mean, I agree. I mean, this is all contingent on the American population having the will to fight, and if someone's gonna have the will to fight, it's gonna be the right wingers. You know, I mean, uh, and I I just want to point out that's something about the right wing that I greatly respect. You know, and this is coming from a center lefty. You know, there's nothing, nothing wrong with <laughs> with standing up for your rights to the point of get, being an open revolt. I, I I find that admirable. So, well, I, th I think the reason why it could happen, but it probably won't happen, is that it's it's almost like a version of mutually assured destruction, because the population would obviously suffer having to to fight a guerrilla campaign. But the military and and the government would would also basically um, turn into a complete shit show. Absolutely, I I, I think it would be a situation where I, I I think the way it is now is that the Amer the Americans and the Americans have their guns, and that's the reason that things aren't a lot worse than they could be. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I mean, the the entire republic is predicated on an armed populace, so. And and the thing is, I mean, does anyone look at the U.S. government and think, yeah, they're they're trustworthy? <laughs> they're not going to keep. They're not going to keep going for power grab after power grab if we just give up our gun. Of course they are. Yeah. Well, actually, I, 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 in my most recent video, I did a video on gun control like two days ago or something, and I made the point that in that um, what was it March for Our Lives? They were calling on some of some some people were calling on the government to repeal the Second Amendment, and I'm like, you guys already hate Trump. Why do you want <laughs> Trump to be the ones to take away your guns? Look, Trump can be trusted as the sole source of power and force in the country. <laughs> okay? You know those racist cops? Yeah, I can totally see the left-wing argument for having only them being armed. Uh, yeah, like, again, uh, like the right-wingers do have some good points when it comes to that, and the left-wing have some wildly hypocritical stances when it comes to that. So, but... Um, but yeah, so th this this is the thing. So on, on a sort of on a principled level, I do think that people should be able to own weapons and uh, guns specifically. Um, what I, and I take it we're all in agreement with that in principle, yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. I think yeah. that people should be able to own guns. Um, yeah. I, know I that do believe that there should be restrictions in types, and I don't believe that everybody should be allowed to own guns. Mental right. cases, etc. But okay. well, in principle, yeah, yes. That, you know, no, no, that, that's fine. Just because, I mean, we may have disagreed on the first principle of it, you know. Um, but we don't, and I agree. And I, I think that's good. So getting to the sort of more pragmatic arguments then. So looking at Europe, um, where... Guns are not illegal. This is another thing that people forget. Like, there's a gun store near my house, um, but in in England, for example, you're restricted to owning rifles and shotguns. Um, which I mean, it's, it's not not tremendous arsenal or anything, but it's not total disarmament either. Um, and so, you know, if a guerrilla campaign had to be waged, I'm sure rifles would be able to do the job at least to to again do the sort of keeping pressure on the occupying regime and whatnot. Um, but uh, the, there's no doubt that the gun crime and deaths from guns in the UK uh, and probably other areas of Europe as well, although I'm not familiar with the statistics. Uh... Oh, Sargon muted himself. Sargon muted himself. So, sorry, gentlemen, a little bit late to the party. I don't know how I muted myself there. But uh, anyway, so yeah, gun crime in Europe is way lower than in the US. Um, I imagine this is probably something to do with the 
lack of proliferation of guns. I mean, I, I don't expect our criminals to be armed with guns, for example. Don't you guys have more knife attacks, though, and trucks oh, at yeah. peace? I, I have a question, though. Switzerland has a lot of guns, and yet they don't have school shootings. And uh... Uh, They have quite a lot of gun crime, actually. I, I looked this up. Okay. Guns is because Switzerland is a tiny country, and every man has to be expected to be conscripted into the army. Because, because that's what they've done all through history. Um, hmm. Which means that every, every Swiss man has a, a rifle. And, and the so Swiss also have, uh, I mean, if you think America has a long history of being militarized, oh God, Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and again, honestly, it's, it's a lot to their credit. I mean, that's why they're an independent nation now. Well, well how about question. Canada then? Because, because Canada has a lot of guns, not on par with the state, but I think uh, per capita, it's, it's, it's somewhat close. I mean, it's not yeah. super close, but it's close enough. We have a lot of guns here and there's almost no shootings here. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. So you, you, you guys have shootings in double digits uh, every year, um, which I mean, you know, Canada is ten times less populous than the U.S., so you'd expect a lot less. But I mean, it seems to be dis. I mean, America has something like eleven thousand gun deaths a year. You know what's missing from this conversation? It's how many crimes do guns stop? And it's not just. Well, the... let's 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 get to that in time. Okay. We're, we're going through this methodically. Um, it does appear, and as I'm aware, Canada has pretty lax gun laws, uh, too dissimilar to the U.S., um, although I might be wrong about that, but I, I recall reading somewhere that that was the case. Uh, we, um, we have, um, actually it was a debate in the last election, was the long-form gun registry, and it was just basically a, uh, a, a long sheet you had to fill out to get a gun. Um, but you, you can get them pretty easily here, yeah. Yeah, So and Canada has, you know very very low rate of gun crime uh, gun violence so i mean the, 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 i mean can you get handguns in canada is that um i think so but for those you do need a, a permit a special permit okay. but i think you can get handguns right okay because handguns are banned in the uk um arch what what are the gun laws like in norway uh, pretty damn strict. In fact, we just introduced a new piece of legislation just, I think, a couple of weeks ago, literally, uh, banning semi-automatic rifles. So you can still own rifles, but they must be uh, bolt action or single shot. Mm -hmm. And you can own most handguns, uh, as long as they're not automatic, of course. Hmm. And this was a, uh, a very slow and very lengthy response, of course, to uh, Anders Bering Breivik, which went hunting uh, Workers' Party <laughs> people on that island. Anders Breivik did nothing wrong. God, that's a bold position you have. Well, no, he did something wrong. I mean, he killed <laughs> he people. Caught, yeah. <laughs> Jackie. I'm, I'm generous enough to call uh, Workers' Party people people because I'm nice like that. That is very generous. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, anyway, so... Um, yeah, the, it does seem that making it more difficult to get hold of guns does reduce the number of shootings generally. I'm not talking about school shootings in particular. I mean, the, the argument is really goddamn simple. If there are less guns, there's going to be less shootings. I mean, yeah, it's, you the, can't refute that, really. Yeah, it seems to be a direct causal effect. Um, yeah, it's like if there's less cars, there's going to be less cars. But, but Canada is an interesting example of where that might not be true. Like, I mean, you know, like Dev pointed out, the Canadians have lots of guns. There's just a lot less gun crime. And I wonder if it is something to do with the culture, which seems to be the only... Reasonable Undoubtedly. suggestion that. Okay, hold on. In Canada, the rate of people owning guns is 22%. Um, mm -hmm. Now, ac according to a survey, 95% of households in Canada owning firearms have the gun uh, and less than 12% own handguns. So 95% have a big gun, 12% handgun. Now, let's see for the US. Um, so 22% in Canada. Meanwhile, uh, I'm sure I recall seeing something like 30% of Americans own guns. Yeah, that is that is accurate. So it's yeah. uh, it's just a little bit higher. Uh, it's, it's not, not not hugely so, and yet the gun crime deaths are massively higher. So, however, in the, the America, apparently three percent of American adults own a hundred thirty three million guns. Yeah, yeah. So there's a there's a culture, but the thing is, I bet that if you were to be able to break these things down on maps. Like the uh, what we're talking about is the sort of Republican um, flyover states types, right? 
I, I bet they actually commit a very small amount of gun crime. You think a lot of it's like inner city gang violence yeah. or something? Yeah, I'm absolutely I, I think so too. Because it, one thing we've seen throughout history also is a correlation between crime and just sheer population density. Well, if you look at the look at the if you take every major metropolitan area and you remove that from the gun violence statistics, you you remove Chicago alone, things look very different. Yeah, this is interesting. It seems that the states that have um, more regulation on guns have more shootings. This is so a for fact. Instance, yeah, for instance, New York. Um, but the thing is, like, what, what this is trying to portray. I I, I I want to actually clarify that because I don't think that's necessarily as important as it first sounds because the thing is if a state has a lot of problems with guns it's going to start regulating let now, me let me the, share uh, my uh, my screen for a bit because it's something interesting right um so when the regulations happen the number of shootings go up but when after a while they start going down i don't know if this is a trend or not i mean according to these statistics at least yeah, but i think that's just because it's becoming you know, more regulated. If you make something illegal, then obviously the crimes related to the thing you just made illegal is going to rise. Right. So, sorry, I missed that. Um, can you repeat that? Sorry. Oh, um, I think when you have a place where there's a lot of problems, in this case, gun violence, and you start legislating against it, then you're going to need more or less legislation because it has a bigger problem. Therefore, you need more or less le legislation. And when you make something illegal, like owning a certain type of gun, then the crimes related to that gun is going to increase, not by shootings, but by the fact that people are owning the illegal weapon mm -hmm. because a lot of Americans don't want to give up their guns. Um, yeah. And the, th the thing that I know is, I, again, I... I Okay, so th there's a there's an inherent problem with all of this because I think that we can demonstrate that inner city violence is causing a disproportionate amount of the gun crime, uh, the disproportionate amount of murders in the US in general. I'm pretty sure that we can demonstrate that if I were to get on Google and dig up the statistics. And so, I mean, it does seem deeply unfair to punish people in the Midwest who aren't committing very much gun crime at all but might have their guns and not not just for sort of sporting reasons for like hunting or you know home defense well the, the, the thing is in that sorry gone you, you got a very interesting super chat handguns are legal in northern ireland coincidentally it's also one of the few parts of the country where there are no grooming gangs so I think that might also have something to do with the fact that Northern Ireland is uh, a tiny bit religious and might not be too happy with the Muslims. Fuck's sake, I don't know why my browser keeps muting me. Um, it's, it's the Jews, mate. They don't want you to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sure it's the Jews. <laughs> I mean, it, always, it usually <laughs> is, let's be honest. And well, as, a, as a Midwesterner who owns many weapons, including some that, including ARs and AK-47s, you know, it's it's a it's a weird concept when you're not living in the inner city to consider your weapon as anything but a hobby or like mo the overwhelming majority of gun owners in this country are not, you know, in gangs killing each other with illegal yeah. guns, by the way. That's that's the problem, right? Like these these people that are committing gun violence are not using legal guns in most cases. And that is mm -hmm. A huge yeah. problem, right? And it's that, also that, handguns, aren't they? Like most yeah, handguns are focus fun. on assault we rifles or whatever that fuck that means. Assault weapons, which is like I mean, it happens, right? But it's just the thing is that the yeah, it's pistols in in, in by far yeah. and away. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're easy there to conceal. They're they're a lot more you know in, inconspicuous. But it's not just that they're they're a lot easier to use at close range. I I, I remember seeing a, a report ages ago that that's you know most most gun fights happen within like 20 meters or something and between untrained combatants and things like this it's fucking messy because yeah, if you most watch, of them are just gang violence if you watch some actual footage of people in 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 uh like a gunfight it's hilariously bad you know you're talking about two people unloading an entire clip and like one or two uh bullets or magazine sorry will will hit the target and there's a lot of collateral damage. That's why you get all these bloods you know, in the cribs, stray yeah. bullets and stuff. 
Uh, but but the, the important thing is that this is how America is built. Like their philosophy when they built the nation is in case like they, they wanted little government, right? That that was their whole thing. And in case the government ever becomes tyrannical, they wanted people to be able to arm themselves. So it's like a safeguard um, in order to maintain government uh, from becoming tyrannical. And maybe this is one of the reasons the government didn't become tyrannical in the United States. And it was one of the few democracies in the world during World War II. You only had the UK, the United States, and every other European country was either fascist, communist, or not national socialist. But it's definitely one of the reasons that the systems are protected, undoubtedly. Yeah, you, you can't you can't stuff an ideology down Americans' throats. You you just can't have brown shirts or communist revolutions walking down the street. I, I think it's dangerous to attribute these things to such simple facts, though. I mean, I would say that the fact that they didn't become dictatorial is far more to do with the simple fact that they're incredibly isolated compared to the rest of the world. They well, weren't affected. It's not, it's not just that. It's the checks and balances built into the system as well. I mean... The <laughs> they, they don't want Sargon. Sargon. I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why it keeps meeting me. I must be doing something. But no, but every time you have to say something that's interesting. What's the, what's the, what's the shortcut key to mute? Uh, I don't know. I don't think there is one. Yes, there isn't. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, the, these checks and balances were built into the system deliberately. So I mean, well, here, here's an interesting theory. I think. Um, Stephen Molyneux said it, or I, I can't remember exactly who, but apparently the banks can do a bail-in and a bail-out. Um, so a bail-out is when they ask the government for money, and a bail-in is when they seize your assets. The banks can actually seize your assets. Um, and the reason they did a bail-out and not a bail-in in America, like uh, it happened in other countries, is because if you do it in America, then people will walk with a shotgun in the bank, not to rob the bank, but to take his money back. Right, okay. Um Sorry, I'm faffing. I think it would have to be uh, pretty far down the line for that to actually happen, V. Uh, but it, it, it is a possibility, sense. but they'd have to well, do it. Banks closed during the during the stock market crash briefly, right? During the um, depression. Yeah, it's happened before, and yeah. again, I I don't think that will be the first option for for the vast majority of American families aren't going to go like, oh well, they took my money anyway. I'm going to go shoot myself a bank chief. They'll no, probably you, be fairly uh, far down on the list of priorities. Hmm. No, if if you have like all your savings in the bank, right? You you have you know your your children fund there and your education fund and everything like that. And then the bank says, "No, we took your money. Fuck off." Yeah, I think some people, not all, but some might go with a shotgun in the bank and it's like, "I want my money back. It's mine. You can't do this." Yeah, yeah but again, like that that's a that's going to be a crime in and of itself. If that if that if you're in a situation where the bank is closing down, your cash isn't going to be worth much anyway. That is true, but still, it's it's the idea of you know you, like the bank in the people's mind committed a crime, which in my opinion they did. Like a bank shouldn't just say, "Yeah, your assets." Yeah, but, yeah, you, but you should you should sue them. You're also not really representing this correctly. A bail-in mm -hmm. doesn't mean they take your money. You still have your money. It's just that they will not give it to you. They will seize the assets for a limited period of time. Uh, we saw this happen in Greece, for example, and Cyprus. Mm. Oh, is V talking about a run on the banks or something? Yeah, it's like uh, in, okay. in, a, in a case, that if you read the contract that you have with your bank, they can do a bail-in. So they will seize your assets, even if you didn't do anything, mm -hmm. even if you, like, it's a unilateral yeah, that, decision. That's, that's a legal problem that you're going to have to take. Yeah, you, you will not win in a court because the banks are legally allowed to do this. I'm sure. I'm sure there are lots of circumstances, and you need to speak to a lawyer about it. You know, depending on where you are and what the case is, obviously. Yeah. But um, but the 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 point is, you're not just going to go in there with a shotgun and demand your money. Somebody, no, but will. I'm sure some people will. Yeah, which is why I, in America people might consider, okay, let's not do a bail in, it, let's do a bail out. Okay, but that's, I, that I, doesn't that doesn't affect what the argument as to whether guns should be legal or not. No, the argument is that because guns are legal, you can't fuck with the people like you could in other countries. The government literally can't fuck with the people. I, I think that is giving it far too much credit. The reason why they bailed out the banks instead of a bail-in is because a bail-in at that point would be economic suicide, not because they were afraid yeah. of some people going in there with shotguns. Yeah, I, I don't think the fear of people with shotguns even vaguely factored into their decision. Hmm. I don't know. I, I Again, I, I'm a little bit skeptical. I think the reason America isn't more totalitarian than it can is because they know that the people have guns and uh, they, they would 
I think I, that's I don't true, think yeah. that's the only reason though. I th- no, I but think I think it's one of the them. system the system interferes with totalitarianism long before. I mean, look at the pushback that Trump's been receiving. And it's you know, Trump's not totalitarian in any shape of the word. He's he's actually been a lot better than Obama, in my opinion. But like it, you know, he's at the end of the day, he's only following the precedent Obama set. But he, even then, nothing he's done can reasonably be considered totalitarian or fascist or anything. He's in fact, he's the system. He's been a far more democratic president than Obama. Like, yeah, you saw the uh, the example with his travel ban. When Obama got denied by the Supreme Court, what did he do? He rewrote the fucking law. What did Trump do? He rewrote his proposal to the courts. Yes, mm. yes. Ab- absolutely, absolutely. And uh, but but that's the point. This and the thing is, you see the pushback against Trump from the various other. Uh, institutions, you know, from the courts and from Congress and whatnot. You know, it, it's it's not that Trump's been... I mean, the, one of the reasons I think Trump hasn't got much done is because he can only get things done through uh, ex- executive orders because the institution's pushing back against him. So, well, let's, let, let's rephrase the question then. Uh, would you think that guns in America serve in any way of preserving people's liberty? Yeah, absolutely. But they're, they're sort of like the last line of defense, you know? Yeah, I it's, think we're there, it's um, oversimplified. It's like saying that, do you think that feminism has done something good? Yes. Okay, but, but is it possible? You? <laughs> Name me. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what feminism has ever done that's been uh, good. No, let, me, let me give you an example, Women right? suffer good. We have Antifa. <laughs> exactly. Point we, have, we have Antifa <laughs> who are destroying statues and are mocking people's property and uh, stuff like that. They don't do it in states where people uh, have the right to open carry. That's true, but that, aren't those states usually a bit more Republican leaning anyway? Yeah, but they do have Antifa um, enclaves in there. They, they how, still have how like. How many Antifa supporters are there really in Republican states? Yeah, that's the thing. I think these. Th- I think these are generally clustered in the, uh, the, the you know the you know the sort of states I'm talking about. And there's okay. also another question: like, would you believe there are some laws or some legislations that were not passed because the people are armed? I don't you know. have to give me some examples. I yeah. Guess. Well, I gave you the one with the banks. You don't like it. Um, well, I, don't, I don't agree that. That was legislation. Yeah. Okay, let, let's go through a few super chats, see what people are thinking. See, P- Paige Garcia, why is Sargon being so naive about this? I don't think I'm being naive. I mean, I, I just think that I have an outsider's perspective. And the problem with listening to Americans discuss gun control is that they are 100% one way or 100% the other. It's. it's I disagree with that. Really? I don't think that's true. That's, yeah. well, okay, so speaking from an outsider's perspective, listening to Americans having the conversation, I only ever hear 100% one and 100 Okay. I think I yeah, think the majority me. of people would accept. I mean, when when Obama did the bump stock thing or whatever, like mm-hmm. most people are fine with it. Most most people are would be fine for additional levels of uh um checks to get these weapons because like i said legal gun owners don't care like i bought an ar-15 i had to do a background check if i had to wait a week i wouldn't have cared not you know anybody i talked to wouldn't care they might gripe about it like you can go to kentucky and there's no waiting but it's not a big deal Someone i think told- that's uh, actually one of the problems because it's politically very against each other. It's a very split issue. And the reason for that, partially, I think, is because there aren't a whole lot of suggestions like Jeremy said. Like, Jeremy, you bring up a very, you know, focused thing, a bump stock. Okay, everybody can agree bump stocks shouldn't be legal. Cool. The thing is, you've got the left suggesting more gun legislation. Then you ask them, okay, what do you want? And they go like, I don't know. Ban the soul they, they'll outright tell you they want to get rid of every gun. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. One of the protesters, one of the kids actually said, you give us an inch, we want to take a mile. Yeah. We're not happy with that. Uh, yeah. Someone in the chat told me to look at the Battle of Athens. And apparently it was a rebellion led by citizens in Athens, Tennessee, United States, against the local government in 1946. The citizens, including some World War II veteran, accused the local officials of predatory policing, police brutality, police corruption, vulture intimidation, and they won. They used their own guns, and they went against the government, and they won. Hmm. Is there so, any reason to suggest that they wouldn't have done so without the guns, by just protesting? I don't know. Did the, I, did the government open fire on them, or actually try to fight them? They that, did that try actually to fight has them. happened. That happened with it the unions. Um, so the, they're, they're, I'd have to Google it. It's been a long time since I've read about this. But the, the unions in like the 1920s or something... Uh, the, the government actually fought battles with them, small, but you know, 
But uh, right, okay, I'm just going to go through a few of the super chats and get some people's opinions because this is interesting. Because already people in the chat are pissed off that we're just not 100% <laughs> agreeing with them. Um, but, so <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, okay, just so, like Saga uh, said, this is such a divisive issue. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. and and you've got to understand, we don't have a dog in this fight, you know. So. So the sea lion in orange says bump stocks are just a piece of plastic. Well, you know, I actually really agree with that. This whole bump stock thing, I'm just looking at it thinking that's the most pointless fucking argument I've ever heard. You know, <laughs> what, what's the bump stock actually done wrong? <laughs> but, um, Tyler Vay sent a dollar but didn't say anything. Thanks, Tyler. Um, how many gun deaths are suicides? Um, I, I, I'm sure a fairly large portion of them are suicides. But let, let, let's talk about the, the, the violence done, interpersonal violence for now. Um, Antifa exists in college towns in red states. Well, there we go. That explains everything. Um, why do you need a firearm? Opens U.S. history textbook. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. No, that, that's the thing, right? Let's assume that you literally have no reason to own a firearm. You don't need it for anything. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to own one. That's true. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I, I have a, you have a sword. Like what? What yeah, do you exactly. need? It for? I don't. I have a sword. I don't need this sword. Like you could probably do a school massacre with it. Undoubtedly, <laughs> you could do a school massacre with a knife, mate. You uh, do a school massacre with a baseball bat if you want. I suppose, but it's like you know the effectiveness, like uh, when, when it is the tool for the job, I guess. Yeah, I'm kind of interested about uh, open a U.S. history book. Okay, what's the about the American Revolution? All right. Well, since when has America been invaded by a foreign power that you need guns to fight off? After that, hasn't happened very fucking often, has it? No, and to be fair, during the American Revolution, it didn't happen then because it wasn't a foreign power. Well, I, I have a counter-argument to that. Imagine if there's a civil war, the amount of guns people own will make it a slaughter. Yeah, the, the left is going to get massacred. Um, <laughs> Probably. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to go back to arguing about Christianity. It's going to be... Oh, I don't think that's a good thing. Like, any argument that ends with there's a, going to be a civil war, I consider to just be... Honestly, I consider it ridiculous and defeatist at this point. Not yeah. UV. I'm not arguing no, against but, you. But you, you, you pointed that. out about the foreign power, which, in my opinion, is also ridiculous. So I, I will also point out a civil war then. Yeah, but oh, I no, are the, the, no, no. This okay. the, the invasion from a foreign power is a legitimate, legitimate thing. There's a Japanese admiral who said, you know, there's no, we, we're never going to be able to invade the U.S. because there'll be a, a gun behind every blade of grass. That and he's right. right. You know, it's it's definitely, you know, it's it's definitely a factor. There were bigger factors than that for why the Japanese could not invade the U.S. No, but... I know, but I mean, it's it's something that any uh, any enemy would be looking at and thinking, well. You know, winning the winning the peace in the United States is going to be very difficult. You have to be incredible. Um, <laughs> okay, for uh, Cougar says Cougar, Cougar, I can't pronounce that. It's only gay if you push back. Good point. Um, Sargon, did you hear the shout out for you on the most recent Sam Harris podcast? No, I did not. I, I'm amazed. I, I probably probably wasn't very positive. Uh, good thing, uh, Sea Lion Orange. We're not a republic; we're a democracy. I hate when people say this, dude, because republics are a form of democracy. <laughs> there are lots and, of different uh, forms of democracy, and republic is one of them. I'm pretty sure the U.S. is a republic. Like, just oh, it's absolutely a republic. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they call themselves that. So yeah, but it, a republic is a kind of democracy. Um, it's a subdivision. Yeah. Yeah, Pe people's money and banks are insured up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars a person. I didn't know that. Uh, Aussie Mandius is in a uh, down under Mandius, so he didn't he didn't leave a comment, but I love the username. Um, yeah, look at the Battle of Athens. Have you watched Crowder's Change My Mind series on gun control? No, I haven't actually. Um, uh, also, to us, a tyrannical government overthrows a joke. To Americans, it's history. Oh well, yeah, I mean this. It's not a joke at all. I mean, <laughs> like we haven't done the same in my country, mate. You know, we, we that's that's what the roundheads were. Um, if non-residents are, say, foreign exchange student or have a work visa in the US and get a hunting license, they can buy a gun. Okay. Um, I mean, is that is, I, that I, that's interesting information, but I don't know whether I object to that or not. Uh, more people are beaten to death by fists than killed by rifles in the USA. Uh, well, <laughs> probably true. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, but it's it's all fun, it's all handguns, isn't it? Really most of your deaths this is this is the thing about the school shootings this is a complete red herring in my opinion because like even even in the u.s school shootings are a very rare occurrence um 
And so, yeah, it's you know, it's, it's, it is traumatic, and it can manipulate people's feelings and emotions. Yeah, it's it's all feelings. It's all feelings when you talk about school shooting, because yes. like. I mean, it could be any weapon. It could be driving a car into a playground or something. You know? Well, that's my that's my opinion, right? That that it gets everyone talking about it. But at the end of the day, what'll happen is somebody'll pull the fire alarm and run people over with a truck, or they'll build a homemade bomb, or they'll. I mean, yeah. not that it's okay, and we shouldn't try to. I, you know, really, are you not in I, favor of that? I don't <laughs> really agree. Yeah. Like building a bomb is difficult. Take it from somebody that knows how to actually build one. That shit is not something you want to try unless you know what you're doing. Yeah, but stabbing people with knives is fairly easy. Yes. No, it's not quite no, as no, it's not. no, it's not. This have is ever... why we have licenses for butter knives in my country, and we have no stabbing <laughs> at all. Have you ever tried to, to cut a, a pig after it was slaughtered, you know, to like separate the meat from the bones? It's very hard work. So I imagine that if you try to do like a stabbing attack, you get tired very quickly. Um, it's... Yeah, but you only need to stab once. Yeah, Interestingly have... enough, we do actually have a fair few like mass stabbings in history. Um, yeah, usually they're done with not knives but heavier bladed things, swords, uh, machetes. Yeah, machetes are quite like common. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, quote unquote, story. Um, there was a crazy immigrant in Norway. Uh, I think like ten years ago, um, he hurt a lot of people i think killed one or two but injured like 30 with a machete and he did not get punished because he was convinced that it was evil spirits who made him do it and we were just like well fuck <sighs> you can't those. evil spirits multiculturalism yeah <laughs> very progressive spirits <laughs> but yeah so like it, I, I don't i don't care about the school shooting argument i think it's bollocks uh, i think if you're gonna focus on anything it should just be the actual statistics on crime which are handgun based mostly, aren't they? Um, okay. So vernacular says, "In fact, I'm, you're going to give me two dollars. I'm not even going to read out his fucking." <laughs> <laughs> this stream should be thrown in the Boston Harbor. I tell you, who else should be thrown in the Boston Harbor, Sonny Jim? Um, this is how you piss off the British. Fuck with their tea. Well, naturally. Although, no, no, no. Do you want to know something interesting, right? Yes. In Cornwall, we've recently started growing our own tea, presumably thanks to global warming. So I've decided it's probably global warming is probably an Anglo plot for us to monopolize the tea market. So get wrecked, everyone. Um, fuck you, India. This is what you get for wanting independence. Um, uh, CCCC says, shall not be infringed in capitals. Um, I don't even disagree. Yeah, it's in the Constitution. It's yeah, right. right. Um, hey, Sargon, hashtag of guns is partly because of collectors. Oh, number of guns, sorry. Yeah, 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 thanks, Dan. We, yeah, we're, we're aware. Like, it's, yeah. And, and I, I don't think these people should be punished because, you know, 500 miles away in an inner city, there are gang members who've got the fucking education of a fucking, I don't know, no, no one, you know, they don't have an education and they're busy Just... shooting each other because of something that happened to someone else a decade ago, you know. Like... Jesus Christ, mate, you have 3,500 people watching. Okay. Um, regulations are not effective on illegal guns, that's true. Um, the thing is, like, guns, you know, like, how do they enter into uh, the status of being illegal, as in they're stolen? Initially, someone well, probably purchased. Had to... Yeah, the black initially market, someone yeah. had to purchase yeah. the gun. Straw purchases and homemade is a thing. And... Really? There is also the, uh, from other places too. One of my problems with the arguments with the the legality thing is, it's like, oh, well, people will just get them illegal, so there's no point in making them illegal. In that case, there's no point in making rape illegal, is it? Yeah, there's no point in having laws by that. Like, we I have to say, legislate because it's the best thing we can do in our limited yeah. power. And you saying that people will get dicks illegally if we make? Well, it, it, it's actually kind of an interesting argument that they make because the left will often say um, we need to make owning all guns illegal and that will stop the gun problem yeah. but then they also say abortions need to be legal or else people will go and get illegal abortions and those two things they're, they're in conflict yeah this, this is why i hate listening to far left arguments it's the, they're just such hypocrites well hold on like some things are illegal like for instance the reason we don't have uranium built cars is because uranium is illegal even though they would be like really efficient you would never have to you know ever recharge it again well, um, also because if you crash it you're going to blow up the city yeah the, there are <laughs> other reasons for why we don't use <laughs> uranium as a fucking primary fuel source but, but the thing is it's the same with guns, right? it's, 
like, <laughs> like some, some weapons should be illegal. Like you wouldn't want people to own a nuke, for instance. Yeah, no, I, I do agree. I like personally, I don't see the point in um, assault weapons, for example. And I do believe they are banned in most states in America. What is an assault weapon? No, they're not. Yeah. Something capable of fully automatic fire with a large capacity magazine, 30 rounds odd, etc. Okay. But if the that weapon, is... uh, Arch, if the weapon is used to fight the government, isn't the point to have assault weapons? Yeah, but if the weapon is used to kill children, V. Okay, you can't kill that? children with a handgun. That's the thing. That's it's a moral argument either way, isn't it? Oh no, we need our guns because we're gonna fight the fucking government. Okay, that's ridiculous first and foremost. <laughs> I, I, and we're I, gonna I, take away your guns because you're gonna use them to kill children. Do, do, do you think an assault rifle is more effective at killing children than a handgun? Yes. I don't even know, you know, because Why? I, I like the, I think the whole um, full auto argument is a is a bit of a red herring in and of itself again. Like whoever hits anything firing on full auto. Uh, well, I mean, if you use something like an Uzi in a, in a confined area, it's obviously going to be way more deadly than a Glock. Sure. I mean, it just is. It's, 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 it's the difference. Okay, okay, hold on. It's the difference in lethality really making that much of a difference. It's actually pretty goddamn considerable. Yes. If I have well, no, to, I mean, look, the kids at all these like, all these school shootings, like these kids at Columbine and stuff, they weren't using fully automatic weapons. No. You know, it, it's not relevant. It's about it's, and honestly, anything that's semi-auto can be fully auto, even if you're moderate, like tiny, a tiny bit handy. Not it's not a difficult modification to make on most weapons. So, the idea you might as well let people buy them properly manufactured than have if everyone. This, if this is the line modifying. of reasoning, then a shotgun is far more effective at killing children than an assault rifle. Well, no, no, I don't think that is obviously. But the the, the point is, I don't think like. I think the full auto thing and semi auto thing. I, I mean, are, are there studies that show? Yeah, I mean, okay. If I'm in a classroom, because this is the emotional argument, and I hate the fact that we need to logically tackle the emotional argument, but very well. Yeah, yeah. If you're in a classroom and the purpose is to kill everyone there, I think a shotgun can do the job remarkably well. So after they go after assault rifles, they will go after shotguns, and then you know they will go up after pistols that can have burst fire. Um, it is... Well, yeah, they're operating from the principle that there should be no guns at all, and yes. I don't agree with that. You know, but... and, and again, yeah, I, I, you don't need to give I, I really money. though. If your goal is to kill as many children as possible, God damn, we're actually discussing this. <laughs> then I really do think a rifle of some sort would be better. Preferably, you'd want something firing a nice big round to get some, you know, clean throughs, hitting other people. I, uh, I think handguns are probably going to be just as effective in that regard. Yeah, I also think you need like, a larger magazine. I mean, thirty rounds would be infinitely sure, you preferable. Can have two pistols, Arch. You can have two pistols. And the and the thing is, have you tried firing two pistols in each hand? You don't, you don't fire them simultaneously. It's not hard. You fire one, you empty it, and then you pick up the other yeah. one. Like the, the, the thing is, Arch. Honestly, Arch, it's like you've never even considered doing a school shooting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing that, that I don't get is like the difference in lethality, I don't think is that important. I mean, yeah, sure, maybe with an assault rifle, you, you can kill them like several seconds faster than if you have two pistols. But we also consider the fact that the pistols are easy to hide. Are, are easier to conceal, right? So the the assault rifle is going to be large, much larger, much bulkier, and the pistols are probably even easier to reload. Yeah, H hence David Hogg complaining that oh, they want transparent backpacks. That's against my rights, you know. But the guy used an assault rifle or whatever, didn't he? You know, he's he, he wasn't concealing that in a fucking backpack. But but what about the girls' tampons, man? <laughs> and, I, and I also think that a shotgun is, is still far better. Like you, you just you know fire. You don't even have to aim. It's going to have a large spread. It's going to hit a lot of shotguns. Shit. Do not have that large of a spread. I'm afraid. Well, you're also and assuming that your targets. Here's the thing. Here's one insane assumption that all this is making is that your targets are standing around in a straight line. Yeah, like going to be running away. They're going to be running away. This is why they don't get you know 200 people at a school. They, they're they're running away. They're and now schools are being trained and you know which is kind of sad but you know the the thing is hitting a moving target is a whole different game but you could have as many magazines as you want and whatever like you can be fully auto or semi auto it, it doesn't matter your targets are not going to stand there waiting hmm. for you so, so you know, you know what uh, I let thought? me uh, let me carry on with a few more of these super chats because they've been quite a lot and i don't want to miss them so, um, uh yeah regulations are not affecting on illegal guns we've already covered that uh, handguns are legal in Northern Ireland, Queensland. He's one of, also one of the few parts of the country where there are no grooming gangs. Yeah, but there's also very little Muslim immigration into that area. Correlation there. Um, 
It's too freaking cold in Canada, presumably for gang crime. Canada doesn't have Detroit, Chicago, St. Louis, uh, St. Louis, etc. And I agree with you, Celia and, and Orange. I, I I do think that it is the problem is certain areas and the culture in certain areas. I mean, I, I saw this some um, meme going around the other day, uh, where it was just basically if you took out the Democratic states, uh, then the gun crime drops to virtually. I, I think that's probably some truth that seems that. unlikely. I lived in Kentucky. There, even though that most people there are well armed and 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 well trained, there's still Louisville, Kentucky, which is very rough. A city of like you know. He, a here's a people. silly idea. You know, like schools are, have like a fire alarm system. What about the schools in areas that are really high risk, if you will, to have a system where you have like metal doors just come down. Um, when there's a shooting, like a panic button, and it just you know, fuck's gonna pay for that. That's gonna be fucking expensive. Yeah. <laughs> no, just look at what happened in the last attempt when you had an armed guard there. What happened? How many kids were killed? Oh god, I don't know. Man. Tell zero. Tell what happened? Th that's why nobody well, was there an armed it. guard during the um the last shooting in Florida yeah. too, though. And they hit yeah. outside. Well, yeah, I don't think out. that's a guarantee. No, well, I mean, it's not a guarantee, but I'm just saying it's better than nobody. It's better than nothing. It's it's more practical than well. I mean, you know, I think Batman you, doors. I, I agree with you that in the short term, e even if it's you know, like, I, I, regardless of how the question goes, I mean, it's not unsensible to have armed guards on schools if you live in a country where guns are, are, are quite easily available. That's that's not a silly thing to suggest. I mean. You know, and I, and I, there are plenty of people with military experience who would be happy to guard a school or something. Be well, that's the thing that that's part of the the most one of the most logical solutions is like you just have. I mean, it's not logical, but a lot of that's yeah, it's totally work. logical. Like, the left is fine. I mean, it. it, it's it's one of those solutions that, like, I agree. We there probably should be guards because it's a sensible precaution, but at the same time. Like this is a Norwegian. I'm like, wow, you want to put more guns in school? Yeah, but you know what? I think the left despises it because it's a solution that would work. The yeah, same like they do with Trump's wall. If the left despises it, then it knows that deep inside they know you just given a reasonable solution and you don't accept their bullshit. So this well, is why they're against it. How yeah. uh, how you know all it's gonna take is the first kid to get dispatched in the parking lot before it ever happens, before everyone who ever thinks about doing it again is gonna think twice. It's just, you know, I don't know about that. Though, there's the I reverse argument that. too. Um, the first time that guard misses his target and shoots a kid, this yeah. is all going to end. Yeah. Hold on, there, there is a very old picture. I, I couldn't find it anymore, but I saw it during GamerGate. If anyone can bring it back up to my Twitter, I would post it. Um, it is a time in America where apparently a serial killer ran out from a prison, and um, th they announced the schools that this guy is on the lam and he's armed and dangerous. So what happens is like you, you see teachers and whole monitors outside of the school with shotguns ready to you know defend the school if anything uh, happens. So back in the day, it seems that not only were teachers armed and all allowed to carry, but even the students were allowed to carry responsibly. Oh, yeah, that's good. weird. Oh. It just this is a bit of a feeling to argument, I gotta admit, but the idea of sending, you know, children off to a school with the staff fully armed just disturbs the fuck out of me. But what if the teachers can have? Uh, Feeling weapons? that's our Europeanness. <laughs> I know, yeah. but, but what if the teachers can have handguns? Because I think um, this this is actually interesting. Because some it's of the not teachers... their fucking job. They're there to teach. No, listen, children, let me, let me for fuck's sake. Okay, some of the the teachers do already have license to carry, right? Now it doesn't mean that all teachers need to be armed. It's just the general idea that in that school, some of the teachers might have guns because we'll, we'll, we'll have an elite warrior class of teachers. In no, 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 because what, <laughs> what I'm trying to get at is that if you look at the school shooters, they, they target places where people are helpless. Like they specifically target places where they know no one is going to be able to stop them, right? So they go into no gun zones and stuff like that. But if they were to know that in these places, you know, there, there is the possibility that someone might have a gun to stop them, they will not go there. Yes, they will. Florida, no, they will choose the guard. That is the exception, Arch. I'm, I don't think most of the police are covered. V, I, I don't think this works in regards to school shootings because teenagers, uh, they don't really think like that. They're just going to go and fucking do it. 
No, I think they would choose other places. Like, for instance, you know, uh, like uh, cinema shootings, right? Okay, now, what would the motive be then? Like, this this guy has usually got a reason, you know? He's been fucking bullied. Well, or the, the thing is, like, I again, I think, I think we're really getting hung up on the, sh the sort of, like, random, sh like, one-off shootings, whereas this is not where most gun violence comes from. Most no, gun violence is, is done between two people who already know each other. It's, yeah, it's but like rape. You know. you know, you know, it's not a, uh, an intelligent discussion. It's an emotional discussion, which yeah, the left yeah. is trying to to spin it around. Yeah, and th this is why we we probably shouldn't even get caught into the. Yeah, you know, what if some lunatic goes into a school with a gun? It's like, yeah, well, what if they do you, anything? You know what? I'm curious. I'm legitimately curious. Let's assume that for some reason all the guns would be banned from America, right? And then you have a school shooting. Who do you think the left is going to blame then? Hmm. Uh, presumably, white people. Because <laughs> the thing is, today. recently, oh, recently in France, there was another terrorist attack with a guy that uh, you know. In, in France, there are uh, mm -hmm. no weapons, as as far as I'm aware, and he went into a mall and started shooting people. They they called it uh, a siege with a foreigner shouting yeah. in a, in a foreign language, and it's like okay, that 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 was a shooting done by a radical Muslim. And you're not focusing on, you know, banning the guns in France? Do you a know that they, they, they raided mosques and took AK-47s out of a few of them? Oh, there were so many. They they mm. were organizing an insurrection. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's legitimately <laughs> something that I just looked it up. Um, no guns are not banned in France, I'm afraid. Uh, I think AK-47s probably are. In fact, surprisingly yeah. enough, you're actually allowed to own shit up to 762. Wow! Can, really? can you learn uh, AK forty sevens, Arch? Well, Have maybe they were owned legally by these mosques. <laughs> well, okay, you you mentioned earlier. I guess if you if you really want to get back on track, um, not that this is this isn't interesting, but okay. you mentioned earlier that um, the the discussion on the other side is that they just basically want the Second Amendment gone, yeah. and I think that's definitely the case. Like I, I have a few um. A few posts by various activists, and they've kind of said the same thing. This person says, I'm sick of progressive people telling Second Amendment advocates, it's not like we're trying to take away your guns. Like, yes, I am. Me too. Keep your bolt action hunting rifles and single barrel shotguns, but everything else, yes, including all handguns, I want outlawed. This person says, that drives me absolutely insane. I'm 100% in this to do an Australian style gun confiscation. And I wonder how you'd ha how you do that in the states, man, like just door to door that, around. That is never going to fucking happen in the states, man. I'm absolutely convinced that will never be the case. We need Second Amendment repeal and house to house military action to do so. You <laughs> see, <laughs> like holy shit, and uh, you can't exactly sit there and make the argument that the government isn't being tyrannical when they send the military around to specifically disarm you in in flagrant opposition to your constitution. This is the problem with this question, isn't it? Like, the two sides have these ridiculous fucking solutions. On one hand, it's like, yeah, I want to own a fucking tank. And the other is like, no, everything that fires bullets yeah. banned. Do you know I mean, you can own a tank I'm, I'm legally? Just, I'm just watching the chat, and they're just like, no, that's never going to happen. It's like, yeah, I agree, dude. <laughs> like, they'll, like they'll, yeah, from my cold dead hands, yeah, there'll be a lot of that going on. Um, well, right, if, let, uh, okay, uh, let, 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 let's change the subject. If well, you no, want to go for a few, su few more uh, super chats, there's okay. been a surprising amount, and I want to make sure. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> but Scotch Ninja bribe darkies with the guns, gun free ethno state. Merck, uh, I, knew, I knew you'd turn up, Merck, because this is, I knew this would be exactly up your alley. Um, uh, w Bishop said the Russia, Russo Afghan war, Vietnam, Iraq, Syria. Uh, I can't remember what that was about, I'm afraid. Just got my Glock 22 in, in 40 cal. I got a custom Xbox XCOM backplate for it. Uh, that sounds pretty cool, actually. Um, over 100 million gun owners, many of who are also military personnel, scares the shit out of any military planner out there. I agree. Uh, Locke had an influence on 18th century American revolutionaries, after all. Yes, of course he did. Um, okay. th this assumes that the <laughs> entire military will be with the government. General Lee was asked by Lincoln to leave the Union. Yeah, that's true. He was a he was a southerner, and he couldn't go against his uh his native state. Uh, and the military were fractured. Yeah, that's true. I mean, to be honest, I'm, I wouldn't I wouldn't be that worried about the, the American military being forced to do that sort of thing. I, I just don't think it wouldn't be the military. There would be special forces, and you can bet your ass they would only pick people who they know were loyal. Oh yeah, yeah. 
Um, Sargon, my dude, don't underestimate the power of rednecks that are handy with technology. This is coming from a dude who lives in that area. I'm, I don't think I am. I, I hope not. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the Syrian, uh, the, uh, the, the Iraqi and the Afghanistan managed to resist the American Very military. different people with very different traditions. With lower weapons, mm. lower quality weapons. So they, mo they, most most of them had American weapons delivered to them by the Americans. Yeah, they were outdated, mate. All right, all right. Uh, most military leaders in the US are huge advocates of the Second Amendment because they think that they would lose against the armed populace. It's also a great deterrent for enemy invasion in the US. Totally agree. Uh, didn't just or not already uh, do something like address these points in his vids? Maybe. Um, in the US, you have to go through mental check and you have to go through a background check in order to buy a gun. Full auto is banned. Okay, that's, that's a good point. Um, like, this is another thing I'm kind of sick of why people are allowing the, and it's not it's not just like the left. I mean, you've got like M Monday Matt's a great example of a center lefty, right? And he's he's pro gun. You know, he's fine with people owning guns. You know, he he, he sees it as a civil liberty. As <laughs> he got muted when he was saying stuff <laughs> against. But you well, know, I, I think I think well, no, hang on. You're, you're getting he muted, so gone. That's why. That's why we're we're talking because you're getting muted. Oh, fuck's sake! Right? Okay. Sorry. But but, but I do got to say, I think that there's actually a counter argument to that because Nicholas Cruz. I, I know we're going back to the school shootings, yeah, but Nicholas funny. Cruz got all of his guns legally. So I, it it does seem like, at least to some people, that the current yeah. system in place isn't working. Yeah, but the 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 point is like when they say like gun control, they have gun control. Like you need a background check, you need a mental check, you need to like I, I know that in some states you have to pass a test on some guns and things like this. It's it's not like these things are just completely unregulated, like it's the wild fucking west. Oh no, I think the crackdown is to happen on black markets and people that are selling guns illegally. I honestly I'm so glad you ended that with markets. Um <laughs> black markets. Those guys <laughs> Just say black fee. That's all I'm saying. So, it's, it's it's every time the conversation never is like okay, we need to bang us. Why not? We need to crack down on the black gun market. Well, that is a good idea. But the problem is the CIA is often involved in it. <laughs> <laughs> so you know they they generally would rather not. They they'd rather if the legal gun owners didn't have. Oh, that gun. that sounds a little bit conspiratorial, doesn't it? No, but that's genuinely no. That's not conspiratorial at all. Hang on a second. I can't believe this. Like, is the CIA selling guns within America? Uh, the yes. CIA have a long and proud tradition of arming groups yeah, are you, in many are countries. You fucking nuts! <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they fucking put a bunch of guns in uh, the the hands of the cartels, and they these guns started turning up in the American states bordering. Okay, okay yeah, but that that yeah. was uh, you know outside of the borders of the United States. I'm saying like, are they actually arming the? Americans illegally. Well, yeah, if these guns are finding their way into the United States, even if you deploy them in Mexico, if they're turning up in the US, then yeah, you, you, you're you still doing it. Okay. Indirectly, it's, I guess. It's kind of like how they armed ISIS by giving it to the Syrian rebels. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They're, they're doing it indirectly. It's like, yeah, but they're still doing it. And let's be honest, they fucking know they're doing it. They know that these gangs come into the US. Like, that's another thing, though, because I do agree. There needs to be more of talk about enforcing existing laws rather than coming up with new theoretical laws. But it also needs to be, to be understood how massive a challenge this is. The U.S. has a huge problem with uh, border crimes, with weapons, drugs. Fuck, veritable slaves flowing across the border. <laughs> Fucking build a goddamn wall, Jesus. <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> Um, I, I got to relate. This is actually interesting. I had a conversation with somebody who wanted to repeal the Second Amendment um, three or four days ago. This person said, I mean, we've all heard this argument before. This person said that the Second Amendment only applied to the guns of the era that it was written in because guns nowadays are more, are, are, are more destructive. And so I brought up, I said, okay, how about this? How about this? Does the First Amendment also only apply to like the printing press or newspapers because that's what was prevalent back then and the, the first amendment shouldn't apply to free speech on the internet oh, because that's a good argument. It, it's yeah. free speech is way more i guess destructive or it can be if it's being used in, on, on an internet where where speech travels instantaneously and not through the printing press and the person said yes that's why yes. that's why we need to regulate all the speech on the internet and i was like <laughs> i'm just i'm just fucking done talking to you man yeah. i'm out Dude, we, we will not agree on anything from this point going forward. Good day to you, sir. <laughs> and, and uh, uh, yeah. 
I mean, you know, you, you can use this to anchor babies to piss them off. It's like, well, in this case, you know, back then there weren't airplanes. People couldn't travel so easily. Bah, 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 bah. Now more people can bring anchor babies in the United States. So therefore, it shouldn't apply. Yeah, <laughs> if, 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 the logic, if, if the logic is that laws were written in the context of the time that they were written and then don't apply to new situations, that throws a lot of law right out the window. Yeah, I mean, have we considered is slavery actually bad? I mean... <laughs> You know, it was bad then, but, but it might think, not be bad now. I mean, think of how comfortable the slaves could have it now. They'd be working inside air conditioning. You know? Exactly. I mean, you can't say that. That yeah. I mean, it, honestly, it'd be worse to be a free man and become homeless. Yeah, it really was. It's a free man. You gotta, you gotta pay your taxes. You gotta work. You gotta make decisions. I mean, he wants to do that seriously. Yeah. So yeah, bring bring back slavery. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen <laughs> here. To take this out of context, because I, I want to show. Dude, they, they literally them. just lie about me. I I just don't care. It's a joke, by the way. Sargon doesn't want to bring back slavery. His uh, yeah, if, if, if there are any idiots, <laughs> if there are any, but I'm you, you actually yourself. against slavery. If that's okay, you muted yourself <laughs> just when you wanted to clarify this. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 okay. Here, uh, bring my screen up. I'm I'm sharing something that's interesting that's relevant to this. I think you might want to see it. <laughs> now i don't know i i, I use the, this picture it's from one of the gun protests i use this picture in, in my latest video on on the gun protests i was like listen if you had the same rights as a gun you would be a slave with that many restrictions <laughs> placed on you so if you want to go back <laughs> that's essentially a really good point yeah that's that's asinine bullshit oh, God. Right, okay, let me uh let me I'm never gonna finish reading these super yeah, chats. No, it's, it's interesting, you know, and then it gives us points to discuss, doesn't it? Yes, um, so th this, this is cameras. this is actually a great point by Jerry Totten. Uh, the US has far more guns than the 1950s, but the least gun violence since the 1950s, and that's absolutely true. Oh, uh, I didn't you, know can, that. you well, you can look at any any graph of violence over time in any country, and it's just a downward spiral. You know, it's it's everything's getting better as the population goes up, and obviously in America, it's video games, mate. I'm telling you, it, it might be. It <laughs> might be mate. It, honestly, we can't prove it, but it honestly might be that young men are getting their aggression out in the virtual world rather than the real world. But um, but either way, there's something about modernity that's making people less violent, and so at the end of the day, there are actually less and less and less shootings per year, and yet this is still being treated like it's priority number one, and. I don't know, is it? I mean, I think cancer and, and heart disease are probably bigger priorities. Obesity would be the A number lot one. of it's got to do with um, with the modern news cycle. I mean, absolutely. I mean, when you see the TV and they're like, oh my God, a gun catastrophe shooting Florida, mountains of corpses' blood stripping in the hallways. Let's watch yeah. it in slow motion after the, the break. Fucking effect. Yeah. <laughs> let, let, let us monetize this, but I you mean, can't do that on YouTube. You heard the uh, March for Your Lives speeches. I think the the bald lady was literally like, "Oh, bloodstained corridors." <laughs> like, what yeah. is this a Diablo Man, game? Emma wasn't even there. I looked into it. She was like in a different building in an auditorium, and she just stayed there until the police came and got her. Same she with wasn't even Hulk. involved. Same with that. He he had yeah. to get on his bike and ride down there. He was like two miles away or something. And it's like, wow, this is and, okay. Since we're on the subject <laughs> of the the activists. Uh, Holy fuck, are these kids fucking infuriating? I like, fucking hate the, the Marshfield Lodge thing, and I, I almost felt bad for looking. I was looking, I'm like, wow, it's a bunch of fucking people. And so I'm like, oh, the revolution is coming. We are the change. No, you're not. No. Yeah. You are you know, it, it, pissed me, it pissed me off so much. People. It pissed me off so much. That's why I did the video on it, because I was just that angry at it. And I, I, the worst part about it is when Emma tried to justify bullying the shooter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. You didn't know this kid. Wow. Fucking imagine it. You know what's interesting? Um, there's this survivor from the Paris attacks. And if this is the currency we need to use, like uh, people who happen to be around where bad shit happened because their words carry more weight. Well, the survivor of the Paris uh, rock concert says that he feels disgusted by these kids. So he, okay. he is offended. There you go. The man's offended, right? So if we're going to, to, to use currency and offense, you bring before children that are offended. I'm bringing you, you know, a person who survived a terrorist attack and was in the middle of it who's offended. Yeah. Okay, I mean, okay. So <laughs> I, someone, someone else asked in a super chat, have I worked out why I hated these kids so much? I don't hate them, obviously, but they, I just find them 
just really unpalatable. Oh, I'll tell you why I hate them. Sargon. He muted himself. <laughs> this, this kind of well, faux well, moral outrage, it, it is genuinely annoying because, I mean, A, like we said, saying, they weren't even that. But that doesn't mean they can't be legitimately morally outraged about gun violence, you know? But what it is, is the attitude with which they're taking it, because the people they're talking to have committed zero mass shootings. This is the thing that I think is really pissing me off. It's their fucking attitude to just the general public, like gun enthusiasts, you know, people who just think, well, I, you know, obviously shootings are bad, but that doesn't mean that everyone who isn't shooting people should also lose their right to own a gun. You know, I'll, I'll tell you why you really hate this thing. Um, no, 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 no. Th this is it. It's, it's this fucking attitude that they're talking to anyone who disagrees with them as if they are a school shooter. I think it's part of it. Problem. Like, I, I, I think, I think there's... A bigger issue with this is that the far left is using children in order to push an agenda. And if you're no, against... everyone does that all the time. I'm no, but in this that. case, in this case, if you disagree and you you're for maintaining guns, then you're for school shooting. This is the logic, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's it's basically they're using them as a shield in order to deflect from valid criticism. I, I think what it is is that these kids. And I, I guess they're supporters as well, but but primarily these kids, they think that they've one accurately identified the problem, which they haven't, and two, they've accurately identified a solution, and that the discussion around whether or not the solution will work is in their minds over. So yeah. anybody who objects to them is is basically just a hateful shoot. person. I mean, first of all, one of the kids called his parents um, stupid that they can't do democracy. Yeah, yeah, it was David. Uh, and and uh, I said, well, you're you're not in a democracy, you're in a republic. And, uh... Oh, that's a stupid <laughs> No, it's not a stupid well, argument. Is... Because, because, first of all, it's a constitutional republic, right? So it's in the constitution. It's, it's still the name a democracy, of the form of okay? But the, the, no, look, the point is, the reason that what he said is ridiculous is because what he is suggesting is openly tyrannical. So him saying, oh, you don't know how to do democracy, kid... Let's calm the fuck down, shall we? You know, you don't represent a majority view. You don't represent even necessarily a just cause against the people you're talking to. And you're saying, I'm here to strip you of your rights because that's how democracy works. No, that's that's not how no, 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 democracy it's, works. It's important to point out that it is a subdivision, which is a constitutional republic, which means that it's in the constitution that they have the right to, to have weapons. So even if yeah. the majority of people in the country would want to ban guns, they would have to change the constitution first, which means you need an overwhelming majority to be able to do that. Hmm. And second of all, it's a republic because it's important, since even if the majority of people would want to vote for a president, it's it's not like that. You you need to to have the what what do the Americans have the uh, representatives? Uh, yeah, the representatives in order to to you need to make the majority. Right. But the thing that pisses me off the most about this shit is how corporate this this whole thing is, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Millions upon millions of dollars by corporations. So at this point, for me, it it, it is bewildering that corporations who should uh, just offer a service to the public are now getting involved in politics. And Gucci, of all places, Gucci, a fashion company, is having political opinions. And if that's the case, yes, people need to vote with their wallets, okay? If this is how we do democracy in our day and age, where you corporations are pushing and they're paying money for politics, then if you're a right-winger, don't purchase shit from Gucci. If you're a left-leaner, by all means, support that corporation. But if you're a right-leaner, then don't support things from mm -hmm. Gucci, from Lyft, from uh, don't purchase Lady Gaga's albums, because your, your, your wallet is now violence. It's exercising political force. That's true. And How long until they make that an argument that not buying their stuff is violence against them? It, it has is, to be outlawed. Is, it, well, they it, consider it, boycott a legitimate form of activism against things they don't like. Yeah. And, and the interesting thing is that uh, they went at this march and they showed the faces of politicians saying, oh, you shouldn't vote for these people because they support the MRA and you should boycott the MRA. And okay, if that's the left-leaning position, then the right-leaning position should be don't buy shit from Gucci. And and furthermore, it's uh, it, it is also the, uh, uh, the the amount of money involved is just wealthy people lecturing to the poor on how to behave. All all of them, all of those kids are from wealthy families. All of them are bourgeoisie as fuck, supported by million uh, million dollar corporations and by very wealthy politicians. Yeah, the uh, the school that Nicholas Cruz shot up was actually in a wealthy area, full of wealthy kids. 
Yeah. So it is it is that demographic. I guess, but but it's still interesting that there wasn't a single like okay, so only when you shoot wealthy people do you get these protests or like uh, only well, when you shoot wealthy people do you get millions of dollars put behind a very well stage managed campaign. Well well here oh, sorry go on. Here here's something <laughs> Here's something interesting that I remember uh, seeing floating around Twitter. I'm, this is unconfirmed. I'm not sure if it's true, but um, one of the one of the survivors who, who was actually shot at by Nicholas Cruz, um, she later said that she didn't want to be involved in the March for Our Lives event, and then Emma, you know, the the, the bald headed girl, kind of uh, t- took a public shit on her for that. Yeah. Do you, do you know that Emma has a flag on her of, of a country that uh, kills unarmed gay people? Yeah, but I think she's it's, it's from Cuba, Cuba yeah. isn't she? Yeah, okay, so does she want to bring Cuba to America? I thought she left Cuba for a reason. Do the, all of these left-wing communist types do. So that's a, you, there's no point even asking them that. We're no, but, it, but it is the point of pointing it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me read this article here, because I think it's all just video games, guys. Violent video games and assault weapons can turn into a lethal combination. Following reports that Nicholas Cruz, the Parkland School shooter, played violent video games between 8 and 15 hours a day, the spokesman for the Entertainment Software Association has claimed that numerous authorities and reputable scientific studies have found no connection between games and real-life violence. This is a cynical claim and blatantly untrue. The video game manufacturer's stance is akin to cigarette manufacturers denying a link between smoking and lung cancer. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> what a fucking... The fucking... Just... Okay, so let's um, go through a few more of these points. Um... Sorry, I know there have been loads. I'm, I'm going to catch up with them, I promise. Well, yeah, you're not just doing a worst key, just reading all of them. You're actually addressing them. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to actually talk about the things that people are talking about. Um, it, it doesn't worst key just sit there for half an hour and, and drone I, them I out. I don't care. It, it doesn't matter. What you know what? You, you, have, you have more people watching than Andy usually gets, so there's that. I, I don't care but what Andy that's does. That's not. But V, worst key has the most popular stream on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we should do, guys? Let's let's go buy a trademark for Andy Worski live. Uh, <laughs> shut up! I'm not doing anything. <laughs> right. um, okay, so there, there's been a lot, so I'll probably have missed some. But okay, um, <clears throat> uh, so one of them is we have a fatherless problem. The majority of gun crimes done by blacks are 80 percent fatherless. It's actually only 72 percent. He says only. Uh, overall homicides never drop from gun regulations. Probably true. Um, but the I, I agree. I think it probably is fatherlessness. I, th- I think it's a very violent culture that ends up fostering in inner cities where there's a low uh, low percentage of married families, and that's not a race thing. That happens in Britain. There are there are fucking places in Britain that are terrible for violence, not handgun violence, obviously. Um, the problem might just be Americans. Instead of picking on the poor guns, maybe we should just well, outsmart the Americans. Yeah, well, I mean, we, it's true. You know, we, we need to consider the American question. Um, <laughs> Deva, what would you say to a to a substantial increase in Canada's land mass? <laughs> I don't know what we do with all of it. We already have a lot of land we don't use. Uh, we, we'd have to treat it as Laban's realm, I think, as well. You, you <laughs> I mean, you know, they, they, we're not we're not buying into the magic soil theory all of a sudden, are we? <laughs> <laughs> well, if we we'll, just we'll call them Canadians, it. we'll populate it with Canadians for a couple hundred years and see what happens. The gun crime will go down. <laughs> It'll be a social experiment. <laughs> um, right, okay, so uh, the reason I don't value your perspectives very highly is because you view the Second Amendment as a positive right. It's not as a negative right. I know that's an interesting point. Um, I don't. I don't see it as a positive right either. I, I don't see why you don't innately have the right to own a weapon. I, I think you probably do. And so it is to infringe on that right and take it away from you rather than enforced by the government to, to be able to have something. Uh, I, I, but it's good, good pointing out that because that's something that I think a lot of people... And again, I, I don't know how deliberate the, the language being used when this is being done is, but like... This is something that people fall into, isn't it? You know, saying things like that, which gets that sort of mindset into their heads. But, um, but anyway, uh, marches red coats towards the border, pipes and drums, lol. Uh, school massacre with a trebuchet. <laughs> <laughs> school you, massacre. you get a good hit in, you know? Yeah, what, Actually, that's very really interesting because um, 
I read this was I read a very old article. In fact, it was a reprint, and it was somebody from the uh, the Second World. Like, it was the Second World War era, basically, and they were talking about the Second Amendment. And then he quoted like a very old newspaper, and basically Washington said that it was all right back in the day for people to own cannons as part of the Second Amendment. So I think they did intend for it to be more yeah. of a rebel against the government situation than anything else. Yeah, that if you could own a cannon. Of, yeah, that argument of like, and the thing is, they had repeating, repeating silences. Yep, they had a lot of those. <laughs> repeating mute buttons. It sounds like. Shut up. I, I can't for this I swear my browser's fucking up. Do you know that Vice uh, released an article which is on their website, the uh, the kids' website, uh, the March for All Lives website, which says that Republicans attacking this are unhinged. Right? Yeah, of course. So, they so they're pushing kids forward to push a political agenda. And if you disagree or offer any different solution, you are unhinged. Again, do not buy from Gucci. <laughs> okay. Well, what I find most ridiculous about about the march against, um, uh, oh, sorry, march for our lives situation is that when 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 David Hogg got up on the stage, he said that because of these speeches in this event, they were going to be united and they were going to all come together for for these sweeping gun changes that they want. Um, and the honest truth is is that the left is never ever going to be able to unite ever. Holy fucking shit! I don't know what's going on, but it's pissing me off. And, and to back that up, I have this, this recent article here. It says, never again is the gun control movement too white. If well, you the answer is yes. I, I got it. Everything's too white. <laughs> Devo has a very good point. We should probably, as liberals, start the march against the lives of these schools. Of <laughs> <laughs> Just put them down now, solve the problem once and for all. If we, can, if we don't have schools, we can't have school shootings. I just don't think that that the left is going to have any kind of unity, uh, the unity necessary to do any of this stuff. That's if they're already, not. if they're already looking into their own movements and saying it's too white, you know, you're, you're fucked from the get go. How, how many um, times have we had movements like these? I mean, how many fucking times the big gun shootings? And everyone's like, oh, this time we'll do something. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. no, this. this uh, I, who did I hear this from? I, I was, I was, I must have been like Ben Shapiro or something like that. Um, but the, the, apparently, um, the Republicans have actually gained back ground against the Democrats since this campaign has been running. Uh, they, they were about 15 points behind in polls, and now they're only five points behind. And the thing is, I can't prove this, but I'm absolutely certain it's the attitude with which the Democrats approach the general public that's doing this. Hmm. Honestly, uh... it, like just the way they speak to people... I, it, for me, at least, makes me want to just say, whatever it is you want, you can just get fucked. I'm not going to be spoken to this way. Like this, some mm -hmm. fucking 12 year old kid with his hand in the air going, everyone who opposes me is evil. Yeah, like, no, gone. kid, shut up. You know, shut the fuck up. Your opinion is not important. And it's just making me want to vote for the other person. Yeah, it's not, it's not that you hate the kid or you, you're forced no. to it. It's the attitude. Yeah. yeah and exactly. you don't think that he has the solution. Uh, by the way, someone in the... I, I don't even care whether he has the solution, right? The point is, he's he's not treating you as an equal. He's treating you as a moral inferior, and he doesn't know who the fuck you are. People ask me to start a YouTube channel. Uh, I already have one. We all do. Uh, oh, God, V's got too many YouTube channels, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> just, just go on YouTube, look for V. I have a uh, Romanian flag in the background. Has message well. me. Why is V everywhere? It's legitimately driving me crazy. Yeah, I, I, I understand it. No, I'm too beef, just teasing. <laughs> You know, everything bad comes from Germany, including Dr. Lehman. That's, That's a good point. Lehman, what do you say to this? Um, okay, so I think there's something to be said for upping liberty rather than limiting it to help people. Should drug legalization be considered over gun control? Um, honestly, I think that the gun control argument is probably the least important one to be having if we're talking about like actual health and stuff. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I, criminalizing drugs is just stupid. Daniel is upset because of Dr. Lehman now. <laughs> no, we're not getting into like the German question. So, um, <laughs> to ask Japan World War II, General made a comment about a gun behind every bush. Yeah, I've already mentioned that actually. Um, it won't really be a war, it'll be something akin to the troubles Ireland had, raiding gr small groups, raiding homes, and whatnot. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's what it, that's what it'll be like. Um, reading history books when it's about America, fall not if nothing. Uh, will uh, reading history books about when will America fall? How can there be a history book? 
If if not, nothing lasts forever. Oh my god! This... Okay, I, I don't. That that wasn't English enough, my friend. Um, <laughs> the pe- people don't understand that the U.S. government is not responsible for their safety. Good point. Um, let's, let's well, it is, isn't it? Well, well, what, it, what is it? It, in a way, but like it, you in can't... schools, I'd probably say it kind of is. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no. What what he means is the the U.S. government is there to enforce the laws. But you you can't have like you can't suggest that the government is supposed to actually prevent harm from happening to you. No, I agree. I agree. That's yeah, and yeah, that's that, that's that what is... I think a lot of people interpret that as. And it's like look, that's not possible. Yeah, it, it's what when a burglar is in your house, the police is just uh, minutes. How how is it like when a burglar is about to kill you in two minutes, the police is three minutes away or something. Like that. Yeah, exactly. You know, we've we've got to be realistic about what reality is actually like. Um, but um, Arch, stop being a heretic and get your hands off my guns. Good point, Arch. Why? No, I want your guns. I'm not allowed to have any, so you're not allowed. <laughs> Didn't you just say that in Norway you can have them? No, there you can't. Actually, I do own a couple. A lovely little. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> 44 Magnum, which I love. It's it's a beautiful gun because when you fire it, the earth shakes. And I'm fond of that. <laughs> Does it shake? So now I'm thinking it's just envy out of you being a collector, Arch. I can't have automatic weapons, okay? I'm only allowed to own a Magnum, which to be fair, if I was a school shooter, I'd probably bring that. Because Jesus, don't say that. That's gonna get <laughs> <laughs> No, but just imagine. I mean, you'd really piss not on just the school children's day, but the poor fucker I have to clean up to. Oh, isn't that like a I'd want to do a school shooting with a magnum? Hold on, isn't isn't the magnum a revolver? Yes, yes, it is. Well, it means you can only kill six little ones. So, oh wow. Well, no, I've got a speed Please. reload. You know, I can just switch out the fucking drum. It's okay. Okay. I've thought this thought through. This <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So, someone does something illegal with their gun. Equal all guns go. Yeah, that's one of my main problems with this <laughs> as well. You know, is I mean, it, it literally is like. I mean, imagine if, like, the, in Britain, in fact, recently in Britain, this this is something that was fucking stupid, right? So, you know those sort of um, gay-ass fucking uh, combat knives that are weird-looking and, like, fantasy combat knives, yeah? The UK yeah, the high fantasy like, ones, the incredibly useless ones. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, exactly. The stupid, useless, decorative fantasy knives. The UK government outlawed them because they were being found used in gang crime. It's like, okay. That's ridiculous. I, I genuinely can't think of a less useful weapon. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't even matter. You know. The, the the point is, you know, these things are not really weapons most of the time. I mean, they don't come sharp when you buy them. You know, you you would have to sharpen it yourself. And they're they're not really weapons. They're really decorative objects that are kind of just, you know, people who think they're edgy buy them. And it's like, okay, Normie, calm down. Hey, you know? I take offense to that. I have two fucking katanas, and I'm not edgy. Yeah, but katana is an actual weapon. It's an actual sword. You know, these these are like fictional things oh, that were made in Game of Thrones or something. You know? There was Calgram bitching about the ninja stars being banned, and the reason these things happen is because uh, Chinese movies were very popular. You know, with kung fu and shit, and kids were actually using ninja stars to play with each other in the park. Yeah, okay, that's fine. But actually, like when, when a true. bunch of when a bunch of like decorative <laughs> knives are found in specific gang shootings in like a London suburb or something. The, the move to then ban these knives altogether is a willfully misplaced attempt to solve the problem, in my opinion. Because the problem was not these knives before these knives were invented. Because these were a recent thing, you know, they've only been around for a few years, like, you know, popular for a few years then. And, and you know, it's like, the, the problem is not the knives, they're killing each other. And after you ban these knives, they're still going to continue killing each other. They'll just go back to the regular butter knives or whatever we still got this legal in this fucking country. You know? By the way, I found the picture with the, the students next to the teacher with guns. Let me let me show it. Right. Uh, so l- l- look at this. Uh, in 1973, so it's not that back ago, a student and a teacher guarding a Delaware high school after someone called in a shooting threat during the morning class. Junior, seniors, and teacher went to their cars and trucks to grab their guns and guard the doors between classes. No shooter ever arrived. But it does show, you know, like this uh, the student with a rifle in his hand next to the teacher you know, waiting to see if anything is going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And this I'm is 1973. Happened, like, can, can you imagine if, if, if in 2018 there's, like, a, a, someone calling in a shooter and it's like, yeah, you know, let's, let's go to our cars and bring our guns in. Hmm. <laughs> it would be completely out of this world. 
But, um, okay, so the problem with most of the push to alter the status quo is that in terms of laws and regulations, there's nothing to add. The regulations already cover every situation. We passed the diminishing mar we passed the diminishing marginal returns line over 20 years ago. That's another great point. Like Arch, we were saying earlier, they've got fucking regulations. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. By the way, I want to say one funny-ish thing because it's hilarious. Uh, Norway outlawed the, um, you know, the, oh, what's the name? Um, I, I remember it a second ago, but you know, two sticks with a chain between them that you swing around? Nunchucks. Nunchucks, yeah, thank Nunchucks, you. Nunchucks, yeah. We outlawed those because too many children were using them and cracking their heads open. Yes, same shit that was because of Chinese movies. Thing is, I can understand that. If if literally, you know, tens of thousands of kids across the country, and it's not a localized thing, it's just kids yeah. you know, doing something. Okay, yeah, I can understand that. You and know. you can still have them at home. Like, no police is ever going to come in to see if you have them. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm mean, not it like tens of thousands. It doesn't. But Norway has outlawed fireworks, okay? Because too many people <laughs> were firing them up drunk and poking their eyes yeah, out. Same in Romania. There, there were people the, that. Yeah, that's, that's something that's widespread injury being caused. But this, the, like, the, the, the difference between that and the, the zombie knives is that widespread injury wasn't being caused with zombie knives. Mm. You know? I disagree that it's injury. I would say that this is fucking Darwinism. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, Arch, you know, if, if I walk on the street and someone throws a firecracker at me, why is it my fault? Why am I the Darwin, you know? Well, very f that wasn't the problem. Nobody was throwing them at each other. There were retard people that decided, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to shove the stick up my ass and fire oh, the I rocket from care. between my fucking cheeks. Th then I don't care. I, I think they should be legal then. <laughs> Which I'm like, I yes, you do that. Please. Yeah, no, honestly, like, I, I really hate these laws that protect people from themselves. It's not the government's responsibility to protect you from yourself. It's your responsibility to protect yourself from yourself. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to screen share here. There are that make sense, though. Come on. Just because mm -hmm. you've got to accept that you live in a country full of morons. At least half of them are morons. And there are some <laughs> basic things that you aren't particularly invasive that would just save a lot of hassle. No, especially, I, I, in a, especially if you've got a national health service. No, hold on. I, I, I get it. But if people, <laughs> if people shove like fireworks up their ass, I don't think it's the, a high enough number to the point where it puts a strain on the welfare. I'm happy to pay my taxi for <laughs> someone who blew up their ass cheeks with a firework. <laughs> 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 At least I get to read it on the news. That's, no, that's true. But what I, I mean agree. Is, my, my I, point I, is I think this is a negligible weight upon the other uh, system. Okay. And I think the benefits, the long term benefits of getting these fuckets out of the gene pool. <laughs> more than outweighs the costs. Here, let, let me screen share for a bit here. I do have something that, that's related to what you were talking about. This is the state of the UK. Oh, fucking. Pliers, scissors, and it looks like a... What is that? A chisel? No, it's a, it's a screwdriver. That That's that's Dude. what you guys call weapons now, eh? Dude, you, you, uh, just my, my country is being run as a totalitarian nanny state. Hmm. We are in the demolition man future right Speaking now. Of that, right now. Do you, do you know that Britain is talking about bringing back national service? Great. Now I'm going to be conscripted into the totalitarian <laughs> nanny state. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking great. Well, time to draft dodge, Sargon. Well, well I, apparently so. And then uh, the like, but you're a draft dodger. So I don't find legitimacy. I, 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 I think Daniel is going to be conscripted, not you, because you're you're probably not getting too old for that shit. Oh, that's good. Glad to hear that. It'll just be my son's problem. Brilliant. <laughs> exactly. That makes me feel way better. Um, right. Okay. Next one. Um, people, part one. People talking about overthrowing the government is a pipe dream. U.S. government tech might cross them easily. Yeah, we've covered that. It's an NRA talking point. Some legal firearm bullshit. Firearms big bears. Yeah, we've covered those. Um, I would love the right to bear arms in the UK. Between grooming gangs and the government, the right to own a gun would make me feel better. You actually do have the right to own a gun. Um, it's just difficult and highly restrictive, but you actually do have the right to do it. Well, you know, there was that uh, father who went to the police and went to the grooming gang uh, to the grooming gang's hideout and uh, wanted his daughter back, and they just refused. Um, so, you know, if the, the guy had a gun, he could have got in there and got his daughter back. He would have gone to jail afterwards, but hey, you know, it's, it's your kid, I mean. Mm. Did Sargon make a case for the NHS being counter to liberty? Uh, in a roundabout way. <laughs> it's not it's not untrue, but I mean, it's about being pragmatic with the NHS. I mean, that's my argument for the NHS. It's, it's, it's just easier problem. and cheaper. You know, I, I agree with you. It's an infringement on my rights to a certain degree. Um, 
yeah, someone does something illegal with uh, guns or guns go. So someone does something illegal with political office, air scandal. Yeah, exactly. Um, the problem with most uh, of the push to alter the status quo in terms of laws and regulations, there is nothing to add. Yeah, I think we covered that actually. Um, Credo is a great argument for guns as well as some gun control. If you want a well-spoken comedic argument, check stuff out. Yeah, I'm sure it is actually, to be honest. Because and th this, this is the thing, like no one here is against the idea of people owning guns. With it's it's more the autistic conversation surrounding the thing and you know where to draw lines, I guess. But you don't want to start drawing lines with people who their preferred line is no guns at all. Like that's 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 a binary decision between you. You think guns should exist, they think guns shouldn't exist, and they're not prepared to compromise, and everything they do is to get guns to not exist. It's like, okay, well, you know, we, we can't even agree that it's okay for the, the populace at large to be armed because it is okay. You know, otherwise, otherwise we're saying that literally the government deserves to be the ultimate power in the universe. And so I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, the, the leftist argument is that you don't need your guns, the gun will protect you. And it's like, yep, yeah, the guns are to protect, like, the government is the problem, can't you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then they will literally say, you know, oh yeah, I'm not, the, I don't, I don't agree with Stalin. It's like, well, okay, let's try and actively do something to prevent Stalin. How's do that? you know that Hitler actually took away people's guns before he started prosecuting the Jews? He wouldn't have been able to prosecute the Jews if the Jews still had weapons. Probably not. <laughs> like, they, like, they don't seem to understand that governments can be dangerous. They've got, I mean, I mean, I mean to be yeah. fair, we don't see many liberal democracies falling into tyranny. So maybe they're just really confident. No, they're, they're getting co opted and subverted. And people say, well, this By is socialists. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah, they're getting subverted because they can't directly attack it. Like yeah. you can't have a communist revolution in the United States. Like imagine a communist going to to a person's private home and saying, "Yeah, we're going to na nationalize this now. This is it's ours. It's not yours anymore." It, Jesus fucking Christ! The guy would just come up with his shotgun, to, you know, yeah. chasing the thing. Thank God for gun ownership, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, mate, I'm concerned about communists taking over in my country. So you know, a, a socialist really, but you know, it's fucking same difference at the end of the day. It's still tyranny and fucking oppression. Um, the reason we as Americans don't go to jail over Nazi jokes is because we're armed. I don't think that's true. I don't, it's not that we're not armed that allowed this to take over. It's that we all consented to it. That's the worst part about this, is that no one, no one who made an argument against it did so with any kind of serious moral fiber. And that was the problem. They just were like, oh, yeah, I know, but you're, you're not for shootings. Are you? you're, not for, you're not for people calling each other racist, are you? And, and everyone's like, well, no, obviously I'm not a racist. So exactly, there we go. We may as well just. And it, that's how we got through. It's fucking disgraceful. You know, unfortunately, I have to say, yeah, if someone wants to be racist to someone, then I'm for them having the, the right to be racist to someone, even if I disagree with what they're saying. That's, that wasn't done, and it fucks me off. Um. One tragedy is too much is the slogan of dictators. That's a I like that. It's an absolutist statement. It's absolutely excellent. Um, part two, the reason guns are awesome. The Second Amendment is a huge barrier to protection of free speech. Uh, maybe a huge protection of free speech. Also, there are killing sprees, but guns easily rack up converted knives. Mm. Uh, I work around planes. You can take out any aircraft with a sc strip of scotch tape, if you know where to put it. We need an ingenuity to fight wars. Well, you need to be able to access those planes to do that, right? Um, years ago in Russia, a pair of serial killers performed multiple killings with hammers. Yeah, that I, that wasn't that long ago either. Did you guys hear about that? No. What's that happened? I don't remember that. Russia. Russia. Just the, Russia, the, everything the, goes. Two guys and with hammers in Russia. Problem. They'd ambush people. Just hammer them to death. Jesus. And Who's so you don't really need the German army march. The, the hammer is a very wonderful weapon if you need to kill somebody quickly. One solid whack of the head and you're done. Oh yeah. Um, oh my god, that's dangerous. You know what? I, I would prefer a chainsaw because the moment it goes like doo -doo -doo -doo, you clear out the room. The thing is the chainsaw is kind of loud. A hammer is very silent. No, but, but that's the point, right? Well, the, moment a you go like, the moment you'd go like doo -doo -doo -doo, everyone just ran out and people will probably trample themselves to death. You don't even need to start it. Yeah, but the problem is you don't want to get caught. The hammer's a stealthy weapon, surprisingly enough. Hmm. Hmm. Especially, you should use the uh, you shouldn't use the hammer head. You should get a nice little you know one of those uh, claw hammers and use the backside. And much better penetration. Well, what about the best weapon in humanity? A sharpened stick. Sharpened sticks are shit. Well, no, they're long. They're you big, get the they're more damage. You get past the pointy end, they're useless. 
hammers no, you, you pull it back. No, you, you know what you do? There's actually a technique for it. You pull it back, you put one hand on the middle of the sharp stick and the other hand on the blade one on the edge, and then you can just use it like a knife. Many people think sharp sticks. Now are... you have a knife with a really long, heavy, and cumbersome shaft. <sighs> okay, <laughs> let's let's not argue the merits of spears. But What's the point? Poke people around. Hammer we're not, we're not going back weapons. to spears, but you, it, it, people have hammers around. To be um, fair, that would make school shootings way more interesting if they were forced to use medieval weapons. See, a Muslim <laughs> in the chat said rock is best weapon. <laughs> I can't believe the fucking... Here's a bucket of rocks. Good luck. Just fuck off. Get me a fucking guard. If you think that something needs to be done, don't hand me a bucket of fucking stones. Hey, you hire a security guard. Like well, you so said in the D&D Sargon, a placebo does have some effect. <laughs> To be fair, is, is it like a Molotov cocktail is not a thing? Is the easiest shit to make? No, they're not. They're no. a pain to make. Not to mention, Molotovs are fucking unsafe. You do yeah. not want to be fucking with that. Okay, if I put gasoline in a bottle and a rag, and I set the rag on fire, and I throw that shit. And if you drop it, if it's greasy and slippery, and you, you, you drop it? Well, and if I the guess... rag's a little bit more flammable than you thought yeah. it was? <laughs> I, I guess I need to make sure that the woman at home makes it properly, and I will wear gloves. Just be easy to get a bucket of stones, mate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, next one. So uh, there's a reason why our government doesn't jail comedians and hasn't taken away our free speech. PS, good stuff to keep it up. Yeah, it's just fucking First Amendment. We need one. Um, there is an interesting on. history to the Second Amendment. Basically, it was a compromise for a large militia from a central government and many smaller state militias. Cheers from Arizona. That's cool. Uh, no one knows about guns in the stream. True. And like, I mean, you guys might, I suppose. I don't know shit. I'm guessing the silence means you guys don't know anything about guns. <laughs> no, either. not much. <laughs> that's, I that's know funny. what my magnum does to a rabbit, and that's all I really need to know. Because the, the thing is, like, the, the arguments from gun efficacy really kind of annoy me. It's it, it's silly, you know. Once you're shooting people, that's good enough, you know. I mean, it doesn't really matter what you're shooting them with, as long as, you, you know, if it's a weapon that's good enough to kill something, then it's good enough. I and all I know is that if you have a Magnum, the cleanup crew is going to have a fun time. I'm sure they will. Um, I've heard the argument, what are your guns against the tank? I think the point is a small amount of resistance will deter soldiers from killing their fellow citizens. It's, uh, yeah, there are lots of reasons we've been through it. Um, I hate how celebrities post photos with young children holding up signs saying something along the lines of, Ban guns. It's so deceptive. Yeah, it's just openly manipulative. I it? fucking agree. We need to ban celebrities. Those yes. fuckers need to be banned from public speaking. You are here to make movies and make me laugh, fucker. Dance, monkey, dance. Do, do you know what's interesting? Like one of those kids said, uh, "We are here. Uh, we we are not here to have a discussion. We are here to lead." And I'm like, okay. So basically, you're saying that corporations, because they, they're the real ones that are behind the shit. Corporations and celebrities are here to lead. And I'm sorry, corporations are meant to provide the public service, and entertainers are meant to entertain the public, not lead. I, I don't get your argument here. The, are you saying you would not like to be led through politics and totalitarianism by a twelve-year-old fucking child? The, the, the child is irrelevant. <laughs> are you sure it's a child? It might be a potato. No, but this is the way. thing. Okay, this is the problem, Marsh, because you you also believe that the child is relevant. He is fucking irrelevant. It's the corporations and and the uh, people in the industry and in the entertainment that are backing those kids. Those yeah. are the people that are actually pushing for this, right? And and the thing is, if you want to do democracy like this, people need to be aware that they need to be having a list with corporations that are left-leaning and corporations that are right-leaning, so you can vote accordingly. You know, oh, I yeah. guess this is going to be a new form of government. Necessary. Yeah, it's going to be a new form of government in yeah. the future, but I the, guess, the way things are but, going. But, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll just point is perfectly valid. It's like, you know, these, these people aren't leaders. They, they're kids who are looking to push a very far left agenda. Yeah, but they're irrelevant. The kids are probably yeah, reading off a script. They're, they're not even of course probably they are. throwing their of own words. Right? Entire stage manage the whole thing. No, but I think the ANCAPs are going to have their dream world soon where corporations are leading shit, right? Corporations are going to invest money in politics and people are going to have to, I guess, purchase from the corporation that sponsors their current political ideology. Yeah, they probably will. I think that's just the logical endpoint of yeah. capitalism if you let it go completely crazy. And America has been letting its capitalism go a bit too crazy for a while now, in my opinion. I mean, honestly, this might be the logical end conclusion of the internet, to be honest. Because like in, in a in a country there are always going to be ideological factions. But I mean, has anyone considered that we might actually require ideological ethnostates? 
Ideological ethnostates. Ideological ethnostates. No, I'm not joking. I'm genuinely not joking. It, it may be that because the internet and social media, I mean, like, how are you going to make people read news with which they don't already agree? Uh, I don't think you can force yeah. them to. So they... oh, but I, I read news that I don't agree with. Yeah, I know anyway. you do, V, but the majority of people actually yeah. don't. And, and this is this is hang on, hang on, hang on. this is this has been a long long known about problem with social media, and it's it's obviously radicalizing people in two directions. Yes, but, but why do you think I do it? Well, no, I know, I'm... I know why you do it. Well, why right? is it? That no, I do no, it? you are not the the person who, like the average person in this case. This is the thing. I'm trying like... to explain. The average person can be like me. The reason I do it is because when I was at school, and when I was in high school, my teachers kept saying and and whammed this into my head that in order to understand something, you need to listen to both points of view. I agree. They they I, instilled I agree this principle in me. So the point yeah. is that we need to do this to our children as well. Yeah, like you, you didn't grow up with a smartphone. But even if I, I, did, I don't know, yeah, but if, you, if you didn't grow up in a broken home with a smartphone, but there yeah. are mo many, many, many kids at the moment doing exactly that, right? And so I really think that it basically is like, it, I bet if you were to look at a sort of ideological map of the US at the moment, you would see it like something like 65, 35 in California and New York, that sort of, you know, okay. in, in, the, in this coast, it'd be a, a, a sway towards Democrat, but still a large number of Republicans. If, I, I bet if you go forward 100 years, that number of Republicans is shrunk dramatically. If I were to ask the people in the United States, how many of them in school, they were taught that they need to listen to both points of view, and how many times the teachers actually the, made the principle well, out of I'm, I'm, I'm saying that there's a different context to reality now. Yeah, but I'm it's, saying kids are not educated the way we were. Or at least I would. I don't know if in Britain they do this. Like right now, people are educating students how to think. No, sorry, what to think, not how to think. Yeah. And I think this is also part of problem. I agree with your assessment, by the way. I, I completely I, agree. I, I, I know. <laughs> wow, did Salvin just tell me to check his privilege? Kind of. I had the same privilege. Don't get me wrong. You know, <laughs> the, 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 but no, seriously, it is. like I, I think that we're not considering a future where that's not really possible to do. You know, I mean, like, I'm not saying that we can't do that. I'm not saying, like, I don't think we can achieve it. So looking at reality as it is, rather than how we'd rather it be, I think we've got to accept that it's going to get more partisan. And even even then, when you have, like, people reading only leftist news and shit like that, you scroll down to the comment section and you find, like, opposite points. Yeah. Well, I mean, wasn't there a law in the States that, that required news organizations to be impartial and yeah, then it was repealed in the 90s it, it, it was repealed in the point. 90s and then that's where everything went to shit if, if yeah. that were reinstated i think it would probably help I mean, a lot you can't be impartial that's the thing like everyone is going to have a bias yeah but, well, yeah, but at least they give it a shot right like, yeah. it's not... i think the thing which you can do is if you have a talk show like let's say sargon has a talk show it would be required for him to get someone that's on an opposite point of view like you have to get someone that's anti-gun in here yeah. I yeah. think you can present the news in an objective manner. I mean, we used to do it before. All you really need to do is, because the problem is now, the news don't simply tell you the information. They give you the information, and then they give you their opinion on their information. Sometimes they don't even bother giving you just the information. Well, it's reporting versus editorial, right? If you want to read the reporting, then you will just get the information. But what every single news outlet is doing right now, they're editorializing. I honestly think we need to take away the uh, the news power from many of these organizations because they've shown they can't be trusted with them. Uh, how do you do that? Do, you, do they get a license from the state? No, we'll outcompete them. Well, that, that is something that is happening right now, which is why they're really pumped up about YouTube and they keep attacking right. YouTube. They just wait for someone else that has a stream with 5,000 people watching to say nigger and then they will start making that. <laughs> <laughs> they will start making a... Uh, <laughs> certain articles so that they scare advertisers away from YouTube. It's going to be Sargon for good now. It's going to be Sargon. I've said the word nigger loads of times on streams. What are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've got a video with the, the thumbnail. It's just gay niggers from outer space just to piss people <laughs> off. Like, that was actually a really funny movie. <laughs> I haven't seen it actually, but it sounds I've great. seen it. It's really <laughs> funny. It's great. But no, but going, going back to the thing, like, like I don't know, it's just this this is just pissing me off. So, My okay. Nigga. So, I, I, loads of people are suggesting I should talk to other people about this, and I, I will eventually and stuff. I'm not. I'm not like. I don't want to really get into it, to be honest. It's not really my my sort of area of expertise or interest, really. But this has just been going on for a while now, and I'm just 
No, I'm at the point where I'm just pissed off of the activists themselves. But you know they're making things in Europe as well, like they're making uh, marches and shit in Europe. Yeah, I know, I it's ridiculous. Yeah, I think there's one in Britain, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, I've, I've got to take off, but I did I did want to talk about one more thing before I go. Um, Sargon, you mentioned ideological ethnostates. I honestly don't think that would work. I don't think there's going to be a choice. Um, I mean, you know, for, for example... Most of society's artists and most of society's engineers end up being liberals, and then most of society's lawyers and business, businessmen end up being conservatives. Mm -hmm. And you can't really take away either of those things and expect society to function. I'm not saying there won't be problems. But I, I think people will naturally freely associate to groups that they think like. How, how do you mean? Well... People, pref I mean, like, look, look at the SJWs. Loads of, loads of them moved, moved to like Portland or LA or something like that. They've, they've got like particular areas they want to move to because they'd be around like people who think like them, and, <coughs> and I, you see that a lot. And I think that's the reason why. I mean, like, London is as a Labour voting area. You think, wow, that's weird, but it's, it's because you get a lot of people who think the same and a lot of mi migrants as well. So, and I think that similar sort of things will happen over time. Because at this point, the, the, the two sides have become really polarized on a, a slew of key issues that you just can't agree with the other person on and have the opinion that they are a good person for like the, the activist types. Can, hold, hold on a second. The chat room is shitting on me talking about engineers. Guys, here's the thing. Um, engineers, especially right now, um, computer engineers, software engineers, they are generally more liberal because the same personality qualities that attract somebody to being liberal attract somebody to being a artist or an engineer it's 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 the quality of inventing new things like conservatives are good at running stuff that's already built and running it efficiently liberals are good at building new structures when the old ones don't work anymore and that's why you generally find that a lot of engineers are more liberal mm -hmm. i think that's what shit no it's true studies are showing it it's, uh, yeah. where was that in? Yeah, it's a psychological thing it's yeah, it's okay. true was that hype? It, it, it sounds I'm like I'm reading that well. to be, but maybe, maybe. Okay. Um, but the going back to the fairness thing in media reporting, I think it's ridiculous to suggest it wouldn't have a, a beneficial effect. Um, the, like, I think people, whenever, like, oh, they're, they're still going to be biased. Yeah, they are still going to be biased, but at least they'll have to, as Arch said, make the effort to not be biased. Um, I think that's important. And I think, I think there'll be a, a marked improvement because it seems that we've had a marked downturn since it well i'll, I'll tell you what happens in my country because we have that law so what happens is we have this uh, council of audiovisual or national audiovisual and what they do is they they constantly find the uh, televisions that are against the the, the establishment mm -hmm. uh, and they turn a blind eye to the televisions that are with the establishment is this anything to do with you being a post-soviet state though no, but I, I just said the, the, the law that you have to be uh, objective when reporting, right? So you're going to have television. Like, if, if everyone is not objective, what they do is they only find the ones that are against the establishment, and they turn a blind eye to the ones that are for the establishment. Yeah, I know. But what I mean is, is that because of a culture that was introduced under the Soviet Union? Um, I think it's because of corruption and abuse, and eventually you're going to get it. Like, you, yeah. you get it on YouTube right now where you have uh, Antifa channels left alone and far-right channels being demonetized. Yeah, but it's not quite the same thing. Why, why is it not quite the same thing? If you're partisanship to the ideology, they give you a pass. Because you know? that, that's not necessarily what we can consider to actually be corruption. How, how is it not? Oh, okay, are the rules yeah. on YouTube not for everyone? Uh, the rules on YouTube are written specifically to target certain groups of people. Right. So, no. so why why are the far left who are encouraging people to violence given a pass? Because of bias. I, and I agree that they, they show a lot of bias, but I'm not sure that we can actually genuinely call that corruption. I think but, it is. I mean, I, we could call it ideological corruption if you yeah. want. Like yeah. we, can, we can specify, because normally people are thinking like financial corruption. So. No, no, no. And it's ideological. And, and it's, yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. Don't think, I, I don't think it's money that's doing Heavily it. Heavily biased, yeah. And and I agree, it's, it's not good. I mean, which, which I, is why I, I'm against the idea of making news, um, you know, objective or something like that. I, I think, I honestly, I think that's a silly position. I think that you're encouraging and enabling people who are just ideological propagandists from either side to be able to run amok. I mean, at least 
with the with the the idea of the ethos being enshrined in law, it would make people think that that is at least a higher standard. To you well, know, that's something that be should honest. be tried to stri striven for. Most you know, people that, know CNN is far left, and most people know Fox News. Is no, right. they don't. I don't think they do. I think a lot of them. Well, if you no, do right. I, I see these charts go around where they've they've asked like just public surveys, like you know, on various media outlets and. People put the Guardian as like centrist, and I'm just like, are you insane? Okay, well, maybe you should make then a law that uh, so an institution or something like this just labels the news outlet left leaning or right leaning. And there you <laughs> that sounds like a really bad idea. Wait, wait, how can it be abusive? How can it, it, it be abusive? Like a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, if the government is then left leaning, everything they disagree with is going to be far right extremist. No, 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 no. You're not allowed to use far right, you're not allowed to use far left. You, you just say left or right leaning. I'm I'm gonna take off, guys. Uh, this okay. was a lot of fun. Um, but so here, here, one, one, thing, one thing I want to bring up before I go, V, is that apparently uh, the Guardian actually has a really good argument for taking away everyone's guns. If you wanted to talk to him, it might be interesting. Uh, he's been doing some super chats about it. I'll, I'll have him on my channel. Yeah, yeah, V, V will have you on at some point. I'm not I'm not doing a general call-in thing with this. Sorry. All right, actually, all right. The Guardian. I'll see you guys later. Let, let, yeah, let's get back on topic, though. If he well, could come on. My question is, how can this be abused, right? If you hey, say Guardian left-leaning publication, Fox News right-leaning publication, that's Silence, it. Or I'm going to get the Guardian to dox you. <laughs> well, tell me, tell me how it can be abused, and I'll be quiet. Uh, the Guardian does ask if he can come on. Sorry, Guardian, I didn't actually see your message until right now. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do a jumping in thing because, all right, like, you know, it, 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 uh, it's something that people do all the time. I just want to keep a discussion like this. Um, okay, so. Violent gun crime is a literal, going back to the topic, uh, is a literal repeat of the 1920s with prohibition, a mob being used to modern gangs and drug war, and the gun rigs did not stop it, ending pro prohibition did. Um, well, that's a, another good point, to be honest. I mean, you are going to heavily encourage a black market if you were just to get rid of guns or make them virtually impossible to get or something like that, aren't they? Because, I mean, the, the problem is there's a huge gun culture in America. You're not going to change that overnight. I mean, what do you guys think? I think it's fucking. I, I don't actually think there is a solution to this problem. That's the thing. You know, I think let, this let, is, me, uh, let me uh, reframe that a second. Sorry, I, I, we've used the pro the word problem twice here, and I, it's actually annoyed me that I've done this and I didn't even think about it because this is like assuming the far left's position is correct. Because like, there's nothing wrong with being like a gun culture and like enjoying like guns, collecting guns, firing guns, you know, studying guns, whatever. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And so us framing it as the problem is a really biased thing to do. And so, yeah, sorry, just, I just wanted to reframe it. So we're not saying a problem, but it, like, you know, if, if that was something you were trying to change, so I don't want to, I don't, don't want to use the term problem. Sorry. Well, I, I do think there is a problem in that they shoot each other quite frequently, but I don't think, I honestly don't think there's anything we can do about that easily without going tyrannical. I I mean, the only thing I honestly can think of is I, I'm of the opinion that we need to completely rework our schooling system from the ground up to be better against bullying and mistreatment, teach them more interesting and useful things, civic, etc. And I think a lot of these problems start in the school. I think we need to rework the entire fucking thing because it shapes people these days. Do you know what's interesting? Apparently, the scientific method was never applied to see if uh, our schooling system is uh, the the best way we can teach kids. Um, it's just something that started the, the that, that people worked on through history, and it's what we have now. Um, and the bullying thing, I, I don't know. You can actually fix it. I think it's human nature to have this this type of, of thing going on. Now, I'm not saying it's acceptable. But if you try to eliminate it altogether and just make it disappear, I don't think you're going to manage to get it to happen. Um, actually, we've made massive leaps forward in that in Norway to the point where we actually had a large institutionalized system against bullying, and we have reduced it considerably. And what about female bullying? You know, it's, which is the passive aggressive ostracizing bitch attitude that is very hurtful for girls. Is well, the thing is, I'm sure we can't exterminate it, but we have been able to reduce it quite considerably. No, I understand. But the thing is, like, every single time people talk about bullying is the male type of bullying, right? The idea of, no, I don't I'm know. I'm talking about bullying. All of it. Yeah, like, uh, you know, 
taking someone's lunch money or shit like that. But women have a way of bullying. And, and you hear women talk about how they got bullied by other girls. And it's, it's just really psychologically damaging because they do it over a long course of time. And it kind of devoids a person of all self-esteem and self-respect. Yeah, which I why I think we need to try and get rid of some of it. Yeah, but how exactly can you stop girls from gossiping? You know, this is like, well, you don't uh, see. I don't think this is actually that fucking huge of a problem because the various measures that have been implemented here are really fucking simple. It's just mixing people up in different groups, trying to stop them from creating cliques, essentially naturally, mm. even switching people between classes, etc. And it's proven to be surprisingly effective. Yeah, I was really skeptical idea. towards it to myself because I thought like I thought it was just like you did. You can't possibly stop this, but I mean they didn't stop it, obviously, but it helped a lot, surprisingly much. No, that that is a good idea. I didn't think about it. Like switching people between classes and stopping them from forming clicks might actually. But I think we need to do further. I mean, I want to see the entire school system reformed from the fucking ground up because it's what creates modern people. That's it's not like a prism for me, mate. Like the, there were huge fences, video cameras at every. <laughs> Holy shit! Um, I'm I'm not even joking. Let me let me finish. The the school teachers were acting like they're gods, like they're fucking Jesus Christ, and you you couldn't question them. You couldn't do anything. Eight hours of work at school, and then like four more hours of homework when you get home. Um, it's only when I got to university that I actually felt like I'm being treated like a human person. Again, is this a post-Soviet thing, though? No, this uh, because I, I it's think... not. It, it wasn't like that over here. I, I made I made a video about it, and apparently it's the same in America. It's like this is how the you know since the te uh, video camera technology and shit like that has evolved that they, they are being really really cracking down on kids. Like an adult wouldn't be able to accept the conditions. A kid has at a high school at his place of work. I think that might be Romania because that sure as hell wasn't wasn't here. Yeah, let me see if I can find a picture of my school and and I'll show it to you. And you can tell me if it's uh, similar over there. I mean, mm -hmm. the closest thing we had to a fence on my school at all was the neighbors that put one up. It was mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I mean, we have fences around our schools in here, but that's generally to keep people out from vandalizing the places. Mine had barbed wire. Because Norwegians fucking behave, you goddamn savages. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I mean, I here's the thing. Know. My school was, I think, like 20 minutes walk away from a maximum security prison, and we had no fences, no extra security, no nothing. Well, it was a maximum security prison. I guess they thought they didn't need it. <laughs> there was actually one guy who escaped, and there was a huge fucking panic on my school. I remember I was entirely calm because I was sitting there, and it just struck me, my tiny little child's mind. Well, he just escaped from fucking prison. He's not going to hang around, is he? <laughs> let, me, let me show you um, the, the, the pictures of my school uh, when I was a kid. Uh, so... This is a good right. color for you. Okay, so, so every every uh, single window had these types of bars. Now the way they justify it is because people play ball outside and they want don't want the window to be broken. Damn. But it's at every single floor, right? And then you also have these fences, which are now much higher. They're like at least three times as higher. Uh and then I wouldn't be surprised if you can even put barbed wire. And at every, you know, at every door, at, at every window except the, the last one, you have the, the same grates around the window. Is this similar to schools in your places? No, where are that is that's fucking creepy. <laughs> it is creepy, isn't it? Like you can't tell the difference between a jail and a school. And in every classroom, there's a camera. You have cameras on the hallway. Um, if you want to take a piss, you need to ask permission, and they will give you like a, you know, a permit or something like that to be on the hall. It it is creepy, and and it's like, you no know, wonder people don't want to be in school. Like here in the um, the Google Hangout, like that's my fucking school. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, that looks like some place where it might actually be fun to go. <laughs> yeah, Scandinavia is a paradise, um, by comparison. Um. Anyways, I'll uh, the gardener asked me to read his point, so oh, yes. will you let me there, Saga? Go ahead. Kind by the way, uh, before you do that, an announcement: Twitter just removed Tommy Robinson forever. Yeah, they did that. No earlier today. there. I'm fucking surprised it didn't happen earlier. Yeah, same. Okay, so the left is advocating for the seizure of personal firearms and weapons in order for the state to have a monopoly on guns. 
simultaneously, the left is also the same people who claim that the government and society is controlled by racist and white supremacists who want to kill off minorities. The same people who claim white people are racists are also the same people who claim Trump is a Nazi. They seem to be hell-bent on removing their ability to defend themselves. So if the Daily Stormer starts publicly advocating for taking away all the guns, then the left will abandon the movement in a fucking heartbeat. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's not an argument against what we're saying, is it? But, uh, I mean, we've cut, yeah, he's not wrong. <laughs> like, it, you know, I'd love to see the Daily Stormer and the far left arm in arm. It'd <laughs> <laughs> be funny, so, nothing else. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, Sorry, there's, there's a lot here that's like not relevant in the conversation now. Um, we've already covered in other points in the conversation. So if you've said something that I haven't read out, it, I'm going to try and make it so it's something we covered somewhere else. Um, uh, if I'm ever in Chicago or in the US, I'll happily give you a gun primer. Uh, yeah, we don't know anything about guns. We're talking in principle. Um, it's not a gun problem. It's a parent problem. This is something that people are commonly saying, and I agree. We have... Like if if you end up raising a school shooter, you fail as a parent. And I'm not, you know, trying to cast shade on parents of school shooters, but come on. The USSR was an ideological ethno state, absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, so you said there's a right as an Englishman to bear arms. I would say that when a right is so chilled to the point of the majority of the population can't exercise their right, it's no longer a right but a privilege. Yeah, you can definitely make that argument. Don't you, like, still technically have the right to bear a longbow or some such shit? Yeah, I don't think they're illegal. No, but you need to train from birth in order to be effective with it. Yeah, but school true. shooting you, you, don't need to, be, you don't need to train from birth to be effective with it. That's, you, you're thinking of, like, 15th century battlefield longbows, yes. which were, like, 200-pound draw weight. Yeah, you, you can get, like, 100-pound, 70-pound draw weight. And they, they'll, still, they'll still kill someone, man. It's okay. just that the people at the time were armoured. So, like, they're still fucking dangerous, mate. You do need, um, if you want to kill multiple people, though, you're going to need some serious upper body strength. Those things are heavy. I don't know. I saw a little girl with a nice ass and big tits that was farting that shit, and I was like, bum, 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 bum. Okay. <laughs> you, can, you can do a school um, arrowing with that. <laughs> See, again, if people were limited to medieval weapons, this would be so much more interesting. I still have muskets would be cool. You know, you, you fire the musket and then someone comes at you to, to tackle you and you use the, the bayonet. It's like, yeah, yeah, back, back. <laughs> so uh, Microsoft PowerPoint has said, regardless of whether or not I agree with you guys, I appreciate the calm conversation. Just a day ago, my roommate's dad started yelling at him and I, because of our views on the issue. So yeah, this is, this is another thing, isn't it? This is what I mean when I say it's, it just appears from an outsider's point of view to be wildly polarised. Like, it's so infused with emotion, and I'm just... I'm not emotionally involved in this argument at all. <laughs> it is remarkably divisive. See, that's one of the reasons why I don't think anything is going to be done about this, because at the end of the day, politicians... Politics is their job. They really they consider this subject to be fucking radioactive, and it is for them. Mm. It is. It's honestly, it's like global warming at this point. Like it's a moral imperative on both sides. Yeah, I noticed this uh, in America. I think it's uh, more than Europe. You have politics as a package, mm. um, and and it's usually like outliers who who pick and choose. But most of the people, like if they're on the left. They're, they are very strong on environmentalism, for instance. And if you're on the right, they're very strong about guns. It's harder to find like a left leaner that's for guns. Like they're the outliers rather than the uh, the rule. Hmm. I agree. It does seem to be something about the tribal identity. Yeah, it's like if you're a left leaner, you, you need to have yeah. all the packages and all things. Which is why a lot of people chimped out when Donald Trump was for LGBT. Because it's like, no, you're a right leaner. You can't do this shit. Hmm. But, um, Right, okay, so is there anything else we want to go over while we're here? Well, the rest of the Super Chats, I guess. Well, the thing is that they're, they're all basic. I mean, I hate to say it, but a lot of people are saying similar things that we've already covered. Well, shouldn't um, you just, like, read them, the, the, the worst keys them? Oh, yeah, okay, I could. It's going to take ages. 
I, I want him to drop. Key, does that? Yes, that makes you JF because I'm definitely not taking on that responsibility. <laughs> I can do. A, a, I, I can do a very okay. convincing the, the, You can be JF and Art. You can be JF's retarded girlfriend. I want you to stop your low <laughs> IQ interruption, Thargon. <laughs> you need to be quiet. <laughs> I was just kidding. It was just a York. Just like when he said Count Dankula should be thrown in prison. I will now go on my stream and I will bitch for two hours about how I'm I have been mistreated. Chats, but no, no, no one's going to understand what they mean because I've got no context to them. Okay, um, just, just shoot. But yeah, okay. I feel bad for the kids' pond in a game of chess. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's like I, they, they were witty comments at the time, but now it's just like, I don't know what that means. Um, what do you all think of the idea of changing the age to get rights to 21 instead? I think some of the stupidest things that have, hopefully you think some of the stupidest things I've thought of. Changing the idea to get rights at 21? I think he means, you know, coming of age. Coming of I guess? age, right, yeah. Um, to vote, etc. Well, I mean, I'd rather do that than what Labour's proposing in my country, which is lower it to 16. Ugh. That's the, I no. What the fuck? Sixteen-year-olds don't need to vote. They don't know what the fuck's going on. See, and they've never paid any fucking tax anyway. So you know. I can. I, I don't. I don't like it per se, but I can genuinely see the argument for raising it because there's so much information, so many things you need to know these days mm. to have an informed political opinion. I mean, sixteen, eighteen-year-olds in all your likelihood not going to. I, honestly, I'm I'm now old enough to be able to say, let's just make it thirty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I I I would probably leave at eighteen personally. Uh, Sixteen, definitely not. Though Jesus. Um, Fuck it. Just give it to twelve year olds. That'll be interesting. See, if people ban V, vampires will just be made in bathtubs. Okay. Do you know, there's this streamer Omegalodon <laughs> that actually thinks I'm a vampire and is actually afraid of me. That's dumb. Um. He's this will help back. Trump long term. All he has to do is portray himself as a guardian of constitutional rights. Boom, media can't win. Yeah, I mean, all they're doing is making a moral argument uh, for uh, against people who have committed no moral wrong. And so you can't sit there and say, oh, you guys are morally inferior to us because of something someone else did. You know, it, 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 that's why I think they're going to lose the argument. Well, isn't like ban all Muslims the same argument? Well, the problem different. is uh, uh, this is Trump. And that's too smart a thing for him, I genuinely think. Uh, yeah, probably. Trump lets arm fucking teachers, like, nah. But uh, regarding the Muslims thing, do you not think that doctrine is playing any kind of... I mean, do you, is there a link between these school shooters and in doctrine? Don't know. Are they Christian radicals, V? No. Are they Republican radicals? No. Some of them are. But not all of them. Not all of them. But Muslim terrorists. <laughs> so there is there is an argument for them all being Muslim. Well, I, I mean, you, you can make the argument that they're all Wahhabi Sunni and you can leave yeah. the other Muslims alone. Like, yeah, the, the yeah absolutely. I, I, in fact, to be honest with you, I don't even think we should just go for blanket Wahhabi Sunnis. We should just keep track on people who are actually like planning to commit terrorism. <laughs> like, like we do, but we are going to have to have some serious fucking conversations with their thought leaders, aren't we? Well, some uh, of them happen to be FBI informants and you can't touch them. Well, yeah, but so, <laughs> some of them happen to be Abu Hamza and they actually run around fucking doing terrible. Well, he probably doesn't these days, but... Speaking of that, I just got a message uh, 46 minutes ago from uh, Edgy Sphinx, uh, aka Brave and Ring, wanting to weigh in on this. Uh, basically, someone on the stream said because he got his guns legally, but the truth is that he should not have been able to The police, if the police done their jobs. They had been in front of his threats and behavior dozens of times. He made threats of yes, domestic yes. violence, including pointing a gun at a family member, and also made threats to classmates and told school therapists he was suicidal. If he had been arrested for domestic violence or had been voluntarily committed to a mental institution, both of these would have been uh, flags on a background check. The Broward County Police actually entered into an argument with the Broward School District back in 2013, in which they laid out certain crimes that they would have no longer be arrested students in order to cook the books. 
So they were deliberately not doing their jobs in order to secure funding for their district under Obama's promise program. And this is another interesting thing with the other shooting that happened in America with the Muslims who shot up a gay club. Um, apparently, one of the gun owners who he went contacted the FBI, but the FBI just dismissed it, saying it's a silly case of Islamophobia. So the guy went to another gun store, bought his weapon from there, and then shot uh, everyone at the gun club, uh, the, the gay club. So what, what is a problem, apparently, seems to be left-leaning politics. And it also seems to be the same thing you have in Britain, with authorities not doing their job. And instead of talking about this shit, we're moving now to the red herring, which is the, the gun issue. Well, I don't think he's Mike wrong is. on that count. Mike, no, that, that is what I said. That's not him. Like, yeah. I, that, um, that is my assessment. So okay, well, I, yeah, then that seems like a fair assessment. <laughs> <laughs> I, the the thing, I don't think it's guns that is necessarily the problem. <laughs> you know, that's the thing I've said the whole thing in the stream. Like, I, I think this is a red herring. The American government never makes mistakes. The American government always protects people. I, I think, honestly, it's just raw ideology. Um, so, okay, so what are your thoughts on comedian um, Benjamin? I, I have actually emailed him. I need to get back in contact with him. I was going to have him on the podcast. Uh, I haven't actually seen much of his stuff, but, you know, he, I've seen a few of his tweets going around that seem to be pretty woke. So I'm happy to have him on and talk to him and find out about the guy. Um, it's a good thing Germans aren't a protected class or you'd be fucked, Sargon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They're too white to be a protected class until they're not too white to be a protected class. And then I go to jail for hate crimes. Um, Imagine the reactions of these people if there was a mass shooting with English longbow. Well, they would literally come out and say ban longbows. And this is the thing, because something bad happens with something, I don't think that means that everything needs to suddenly be banned. You know, I mean, if you can demonstrate like a widespread pattern of damage that was like done in in you know all lawfully, all you know, all this, all that, you know, if it was pretty pretty uniform event, I could I could see the the pragmatic argument overcoming the principle. You know, I, I would say, yeah, okay, this is just genuinely happening a lot. It's always under the same circumstances, blah, blah, blah. But these school shootings aren't always under the same circumstances, you know, or just mass shootings in general. There are lots of different reasons for them. And it's it, it's not the fact that the guns exist that I think is the problem. I think these people would be doing the mass shootings in other ways, and not shootings, but mass killings, in other ways if they didn't have access to guns, just like but fucking zombie knives. By the way, to clear my reputation, when I said little girl with nice hats and big tits, I meant midget, not an underage person. You <laughs> you should have assumed worst possible interpretation. <sighs> yeah, this is the new form of trolling. Whenever yeah. someone says something, assume the worst possible interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> um, US Supreme Court has ruled that police do not have a duty to protect. That's true. Uh, they've got a duty to enforce the laws, haven't they? Uh, yeah, zombie knives are banned. Arch, can you imagine a chainsword less useful by default? Sorry, is this guy slicing chainsaws? What the fuck? Is there a thing like a chainsword? Arch, how useful would a chainsword be? Uh, for a normal human, fucking useless. Why is that? Uh, Too big. The revving, well, it's very heavy, too. It's whenever you hit somebody in it, the chainsaw is going to try and rip its way out of your hands to continue digging into the flesh. I mean, there was even a beautiful uh, description of this in a ghost, ghost novel mm -hmm. where they described like how incredibly fucking horrible it would be to fight chainsaw versus chainsaw. The the belts would be skitting off each other. No, no, no. But what about just, just the chainsaw so you can hack people with? A bad weapon. The thing is. You would need a ridiculously powerful fucking engine, and it'd be having to rip through a bone and shit, and it'd be fucking heavy, and it'd be difficult to control because it's big and revving and just. Probably I'd rather have a sword. sword. Yeah. Um, if you're a space marine, however, oh no, it's a great weapon because you're fucking big and strong. Uh, the military has sworn an oath to protect the constitution from threats both foreign and domestic. Good. Uh, I knew that already, though. To be honest, um, that's why we'll change the constitution first. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The average US soldier would refuse to fire upon or confiscate guns from their fellow Americans. You know, I don't know. I don't I'm not saying they would. It's just like I think that there are going to be certain groups who are going to be effectively brainwashed. because uh, the, the 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 problem the problem with being a soldier is you're never really informed. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be the normal soldiers. They would they would give a series of incentives yeah. and they would form a group which they could rely upon. And these would probably wear masks, etc., to protect their identities, etc. So, of course, lie to people then. Yeah, not, not just that, they'll just lie to them. 
they will just lie to them about the the, the qualities of the people that they need to do whatever to. Yeah, terrorist groups, all kinds of shit. Yeah, they, they, that, that's just something they do. You know, you have to do it. To, to, you, you can't sit there and portray your enemy who's going to be shooting guns at you as a fair-minded, decent fellow when he's not shooting a gun at you. <laughs> like, you it's going to make it far more difficult to prosecute him. It's going to make it far more difficult for the person to want to go and shoot that guy. You know? <laughs> like, people, people forget like, the psychology angle for any of these things. Like, people are people. You have to kind of brainwash them into shit. It's, it's awful. Um, uh, so someone brought up the Battle of Athens, Tennessee. Yeah, we already covered that. Um, uh, we one eye people take deep offense to you not wanting to join others to join our ranks. That's very uh, exclusive of you. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe maybe we need to have an equality of eye numbers. Um, oh, honestly, though, a seriously. Gun that shoots guns. <laughs> I, seriously, I've literally seen feminists in my country arguing that in principle it is just wrong for a man to earn a different amount of money to a woman. Hmm. Men don't even earn the same amount of money as each other. This is fucking ludicrous. But they, they're arguing in oh. principle. And it's like, no, that's not a fucking principle. I, I said this in my video today. Um, let's say we have two kids. Uh, one is Johnny, 10-year-old, and one is Jane, 10-year-old. Now, if Johnny wants to become the CEO of a corporation, he has to climb the social ladder and fight other men in order to, to get his spot and, and show that he's worthy. Now, if Jane wants to become the CEO of a corporation, she has to fight other men in order to get her spot and prove that she is worthy. But for some reason, it's acceptable for John to fight other men, but it's not acceptable for Jane because all of a sudden it's the patriarchy keeping her down because she's a woman and she's incapable of fighting other men. <laughs> the patriarchy. <laughs> Fucking patriarchy, man. Honestly. I, I hate feminists in Britain talking about Theresa May. Just She's the head of the fucking patriarchy. Did you email her? No, I haven't need emailed Teresa. Then fucking email her and point it out. Teresa, you suck. <laughs> How is she supposed to know? It's I'll like just send just... email Teresa, you're you're shit. No, just say it's like I I'm I'm a, a Tory conservative and I think that this talking point is uh, something that the Labour is pushing and I don't see why you have to, to say it as a conservative. Okay, blah, blah, blah. I'll let you in on the reason, V. It's because I don't have her email. Well uh... I, I the thing is like She's gonna have uh, like assistants who read the emails, and they. Well, it doesn't matter. Just email it uh, and make a video where you write the email. It would be cool. I'll watch. It. Uh, maybe, maybe. I, 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 mean, I, this I, is I democracy. really don't think she's going to listen to me though. It doesn't matter. It's, it's the principle of it. Plus, it will make it interesting. Okay. Well, fair. Uh, fair. Here he goes, Argon. That's his email. That's uh, her email. Yeah, but it's not going to be <laughs> her that reads it. You, you have YouTube thirteen. I would do Teresa May. Like she, she'll have a private email that she uses. Send her Teresa, spam mail. Teresa May only listens to fox hunters. Fucking do it like a, a ransom letter with letters clipped out of a newspaper. You'll be real popular. <laughs> but by the way, Sarah, do you know that Sarah? Not only is she is she a fox hunter, but no, she also. Works... I'm, no, I'm, no, no, no. Let, let me let me explore this idea with Arch. So yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of they send them threatening ideas <laughs> on ransom paper, like in, from newspaper clippings. Well, the ideas don't necessarily need to be threatening, but they need to look threatening so that she'll take notice. Because, as you said, the assistant I'll probably throws out answer. all of the other shit. <laughs> but she wouldn't throw out a ransom letter now, would she? No. Um, Mr. But, Miss Prime Minister, has your children been abducted recently? No, I don't think so. I, I wanted to say about the fox hunting that Sarah not only wears the regalia, you know, with the red cloak where she goes fox hunting, but she also made a very compelling argument. And she was highly in support of the conservatives doing the fox hunting. That's, uh, that's fucking savagery. And you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> to be fair, you should kill foxes. They're fucking pests. I, I know, but Sarah got a second. Yeah, this is a bad thing. Why right? fox hunting? Why? Wow. You should kill foxes. You really should. You should kill most forest animals, to be fair. Except for squirrels. squirrels I think Sarah got muted himself again. Anyways, I'm going to head off and go to bed soon because I have to get up in the morning and spend time with the family, which is basically work. Hmm. If you want, Sarah, I'll read the super chats. Is, is Sarah gone? Oh no, he's muted. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll entertain the chat then. Let's see if I can read the last three super chats at least. If military knew 
if they were about to violate the Second Amendment, we've had a huge amount of insubordination. Yeah, I, I honestly think you'd have like entire regiments defected. Uh, read super chats. I am shut the fuck up. The reason people keep blaming guns and not the men and boys misusing them is because males are dispro- d- disposable in our society. The reason they only notice the gun is because to them nothing is holding it. You're a blessing, V. V is special. Unfortunately, these are the only three super chats I have access to. Um, my charity has succeeded. I have managed to take control of Sarga's live stream. It is by now. And we are not going to get Sargon's low IQ intervention. Uh, wage gap is around $0.06 per $1 is choice based. Um, see, now, now, now I can do nasty stuff. I can, uh, I can be evil, like shill my Patreon, shill my YouTube channel. Uh, the things that I can do. <laughs> I have taken over. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, my, my, my authority is right now. I'll try to go, did he? Yes. You want me to read the super chats really fast? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, you need to give me the link because I, I only have access to the last three. Oh, well, I can't. But okay, I'll, I'll read them. It's fine. Okay. Um, only fake Americans advocate Second Amendment repeal. <laughs> um, what's your own opinion on Swiss gun ownership system? As a citizen of both Switzerland and the US, I find the Swiss system more effective. Um, I don't really know what the Swiss system is. Service guarantees gun ownership. Yeah, but yeah, they get issued one, don't they? I'm, I'm sure that's the case, but I, I, I don't think I'm well educated enough to compare properly on that. Um, I want out of this country. If I go to Norway, will Arch put an anchor baby in me? <laughs> I'll have the details later. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, I'll, I'll just answer in in his stead. Yes, he will. Yeah, uh, that's actually a verbal contract with Arch that you have now. Mm-hmm. So do feel free to take it up with a lawyer. Um, Arch, Arch will impregnate you. <laughs> um, uh, he does want to keep the baby as well. Um, gun control advocates want to get rid of the Second Amendment, but they don't seem to want to go through the arduous process of doing it legally. Well, that's a good point. And one thing annoys me, that don't call them gun control advocates. Call them gun abolitionists, because that's what they actually are. It's like, look, we just want to get rid of guns. <laughs> Fuck's sake, dude, you know? You give us an inch, we take a mile. Yeah, don't, don't <laughs> say because, oh, it's just for regulation. It's like you've got regulation. You're complaining that people who bought guns legally sometimes decide to use them illegally. That's your complaint. It's like, okay. It's like, it's like uh, sponsored by Gucci and Lady Gaga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly that you know, th- this annoying child activist who's looking at you like you are their moral inferior is sponsored by Gucci. George Clooney <laughs> takes your guns away. Couldn't, yeah, in Hollywood as well, yeah. Couldn't be any more fucking bourgeois, could it? I mean, it's Hollywood also the is such a cesspool. Oh, there, there's even like a dating app um, that uh, that weighed in and, and removed all the guns in uh, uh, in their uh, website. But the, the, there's also another thing. That yeah, I, dude, I, YouTube's, YouTube is banning gun pro-gun channels and i say pro-gun as in like gun enthusiast channels yeah. not not pro-school shooting before some fucking idiot interprets interprets it that way you know like they, they, there is nothing wrong with being a gun hobbyist it's okay to be a gun hobbyist especially if you live in a country where you can legally obtain your firearms nothing wrong with that at all it's, it's like this youtube is going way overboard and this is i totally enjoy yeah. By the way, I'm sharing my screen so I can show you something very, very, very fascinating. I'm pretty sure uh, you're you're gonna love this. Go so, on. yeah, you need to, you need to put me. All right. So as you can see, it's going to be another interesting years for Star Wars. This is uh, their new poster with God, without God. So they're not offending anyone. Holy so shit. if you're a right-leaning person and you want the poster, you're going to choose the one on the left. <laughs> and if you're a left-leaning poster, you're going to choose the one on the right. Because See, even images with guns can cause school shootings. Th- this is this is why I'm, I'm not joking. It'll just end up being ideological echo chambers. <laughs> Yeah, there will be ideological ethno states. That's, I'm, I'm telling you, that's the future. People who just agree on a certain set of values will just choose to live together. And in the United States, we've got like you know the states' rights thing. If if all of this was being done at the state level, I, I probably wouldn't even care about it at all. Um, but okay, so why is it not PC in Europe to form a private militia? Uh, <laughs> 
So why, I assume you mean why is it not politically correct? I don't know. Um, I, I don't see anything particularly politically incorrect about wanting to be a private militia, but our private militia is going to be armed with spoons. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> take from that what you want. Um, the corrupt US government is encroaching on our rights bit by bit over time. The left knows the government is corrupt, yet they seem too naive to realise that an armed citizenry keeps them in check. Uh, the thing with the left is they've got, they're under the delusion that they're going to be the ones controlling the tyranny. Uh, I, I don't know <laughs> why they think so that. Bad. Yeah, but that is literally what they think, isn't it? They want to control the tyranny. <laughs> yeah, but they, they think that they will be doing that. Uh, do, do, you remember, do you remember when Trump got into power and they're chipping out of yeah, surveillance it, state? It, it, <laughs> exactly. And it's all like, okay, yeah, suddenly you've got Donald Trump and it's like, okay, now. But they still don't know. They, they still don't understand. They just think they can, they can do it. They're so, lucky Donald Trump is not abusing his shit. <laughs> yeah, he could be way worse. He could be way fucking worse. Um, <laughs> it's funny that Donald Trump didn't find this cool toy Obama had, which is called Executive Order. <laughs> well, he, yeah, he uses them all the time. Um, look at Russia. We don't have guns, just like rights. <laughs> Do you know? I, I didn't know that Russians didn't, didn't have guns, actually. I don't know. I, I just saw this video yesterday. With actually, guy, I shouldn't be too surprised now. I feel, I don't with, with the guy in Russia who uh, almost committed a traffic accident and immediately from the car behind him, like four guys with AK-47 just stormed up and put him on, on the ground, on the ground right now, and then dragged him into the van and drove off. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> fucking horrible. Um, so who would win the fight, David Hogg or Steve Shives? Uh, the answer is he, obviously Steve Shives. Steve Shives would paste it. Um, David Hogg literally is a skeleton. But he's only like 12 or something, so you know you can't blame him too much. But Steve Shives is a grown adult. He can take him. Uh, I love how much of Arch... <laughs> I love how much Arch has planned his kills. List? <laughs> Hammers don't run out of fuel, V. That's a good point. In your face, V. Mm. Um, in, in, the, in this American's opinion, your politicians are a disgrace to your citizens. Yeah, it's, it's not just... An American opinion, my dude. That's an, everyone has that opinion. Thank fuck. They act with contempt towards their charges, and on the current subject, accuracy is king, caliber is queen. Uh, mm, that's interesting. Um, but I agree, they do act with contempt towards their charges. That's a good way of putting it as well. Um, people have been accusing you of spreading propaganda and that cultural Marxist is conspiracy theory that originated in Hitler's Germany. What do you think of that? How is uh, the conspiracy theory? There's yeah. books written on it. You go to Google Scholar, you, you type in cultural Marxism, and you'll find like uh, actual university papers from the 70s written about this shit. This is what neo-Marxism is. It's just it's on, There's a Wikipedia article. Go read it. You know, it's not my fucking just conspiracy Just call it theory. intersectional <laughs> feminism. I mean, it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, that's all I do. When I, when, normally, it's the right-wingers who say cultural Marxism. I say, well, you're talking about intersectional feminism, aren't you? Or intersectional social justice, and, and they'll be like, "Yeah, you know, it's a, you know, it's like, well, it is Marxist. There's no getting around that, and it is to do with the culture of the society. It's not an inaccurate." Didn't you have term. the video banned because you called it gender communism? No, I don't think so. It was limited state or some shit. They they didn't like the fact that you used the term gender communist. Oh right, well maybe 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 limited state. I don't think it was banned. I think, um, think you're striking a little bit too close to home, you know. Well, yeah, but that's fucking true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally, if any of them want to come in and discuss this with me, we will. I'm I'm more than happy to have this conversation because I mean, like, the, you can't describe social justice in any other terms that than through a Marxist lens. That's what it's being viewed through to. Describe the power dynamics between two separate "quote unquote." Well, yeah, I think classes. I could do a good job to contradict you, but okay. Go, on, go, go ahead. Go on. Well, real Marxists were concerned about class. Real Marxists would put these people up against the wall and shoot them. They, they. Yeah, but these people it. are concerned about class. They're all socialists. All They're of them. They're not concerned they... about class. They're concerned about uh, no. outcome. They're concerned about race and gender. No, no. You, intersectionality is the extension of Marx's class dynamics to every kind of field and categorization of person. Because a person's class is just one aspect of, about them. You can apply this to anything that's dichotomized. Yeah, but when you do this, when you, you, make, you enlarge this thing, you're watering down what class is. So for instance, a cultural Marxist, he, he looks at black people and goes like, okay, most of them are oppressed because they're lower class, right? Yeah, no, okay, hang on, hang on. And, and then, I, no, then no, okay, listen, stop, 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 stop. I agree, I agree with the communists that you're portraying at the point, this yeah. point, right? 
but th that's why the communists you're portraying is having the conversation with me because they're trying to defend communism from intersectionality. That's well, correct. They, yeah, I know, I know, but that's the point. You know, intersex. I, now I, I agree. I would, I, I would actually like to defend communism from intersectionality <laughs> as well. These but people the are is, so subversive. They subverted communism. <laughs> exactly. The point is, they're just doing what Marxists do with class, and they're doing it to gender, or they're doing it to something else. You know, they, 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 which means they naturally are all personal communists. No, they're, they're all the, socialists. And the it's, people, the people at the Frankfurt School were critical of both capitalism and communism. They didn't they agree were. with communism. So it wasn't real communism. <laughs> No, they they didn't think that uh, the the worker is going to have like a class conscience. Whether mm. people who are women, they will have a gender conscience. Yeah, but that's not saying that they don't agree with the idea of having a form of class consciousness. That's no, saying... they don't care about class. Like in in their opinion, no, 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 no. no, no. Okay, listen, right, class. Okay, let, when we when we're talking about what Marxists call class, let's call it economic class. Okay. Because that then that that's you, you would agree that that's what they're talking about, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's e economic class. The term class doesn't just mean economic class. When you create a class of something, it it could be related by anything, but it's it's a it's a series of converging interests. No, I know. And th this this means that all of the people in this class are effectively in the same boat when it comes to certain aspects of their existence. And they, e economics is one of those things, but also gender is another one of those things. They so, change the definition of uh, demographics and class. So they, they replace demographics with class in an idea that now you can even have uh, people who didn't choose to become workers in, in the part of the oppressed. So basically, you're, when, when you say about, you know, women, you're also talking about babies and even wealthy women, like women that are incredibly rich are still going to side with you because they're trying to awaken this like gender class conscious yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and the the but the point is the objection from the frankfurt school like you were you were pointing out there is just that they didn't think it was pragmatic to try and do it along economic class lines yes it's not that it's wrong or inappropriate to do that or something like that. No, it is, it is wrong because you're excluding other people who aren't part of the working class, but they're okay. still minorities. Okay. My, my, my point is, I don't think we should be trying to ignite a class consciousness against people who are not actually uh, strictly, and not, not even strictly speaking, but in many ways, not even really a class. I think, I think it's a fiction to say that women represent a class. Exactly. I don't think that's true. Well, the, 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 the sad part is if you push it long enough, it will stick. Yeah, I know. It's just but like, the, uh, but you the, know, like, yeah, but my point like is, the is the disagreement. Enough, yeah, but, it will stick. Yeah, but my point is, what, what you're saying is, is the reason they weren't socialists is not because they disagreed in principle. It's because they disagreed that they, it was achievable. But no, I'm no, saying they, that they, the disagreement in should be well. in principle. It, it, it is in principle as well because they believe that even if a black person is wealthy, he's still an oppressed person and he's still suffering. So uh, just focusing on the worker and the working class ignores like the 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 people who can't work, for instance. Yeah, but what what you're saying is not a repudiation mm -hmm. of the idea of socialism. I I think that their version of socialism. Um, is completely contradictory to the version that Marx envisioned it. And their end goal is not the communist utopia. Their end goal is endless conflict. I don't know if like, I would actually th describe it that way, to be honest. It, it is really according to Herbert Marcuse. He does say that the end goal is just... Uh, really? Because I, think... I don't think the action... I mean, like... What, the, the end goal what is, the is end goal? totalitarianism. I mean, you, you yeah, are no, right. but that, that is not an end goal in of itself. Like the totalitarianism. Okay, okay, yeah, sorry, yeah, I should say the end conclusion then is totalitarianism because, in a way, I mean, like they, you are right. Obviously, I'm sure you said that, and it, it, he is going to create eternal chaos, but that's going to necessitate eternal tyranny to subdue yeah. that chaos. It's, I mean, yeah. it's never going to last. People I mean, don't endure chaos; they 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 require someone to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, communism at least focuses on uh, the, the the creation of a utopia, you know, where you don't have money, everyone is equal, stuff like that. I mean, it, it does have like this this mm -hmm. brilliant uh, 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 view in the end, you know, national socialism, same shit. But this ideology that just uh, this is why they don't always talk about what do you want to achieve. Yeah, but you know, if you ask a feminist like when is feminism going to achieve its goals, they they don't have an answer to that. Okay, okay, but what I think, what, okay, but what I'm saying is not 
that they were communists in the sort of traditional sense that we're talking about, right? Yeah. What I'm saying is they follow the same set of principles as communists. Right? They, uh, they view things through a Marxist lens. Think, they, uh, they view it specifically through a lens of power dynamics of oppressor and oppressed. Yeah. For every every majority must be oppressing a minority, right? And so economically, that lends them to naturally adopt socialism through you know a Marxist version of socialism. So they well, they, they don't talk about the abolition of private property, for instance. I, I, I think I, so, I think we should keep this discussion for another time because it's really late. Um, well, I, I would really love to have it, by the way. Like it's. Uh, oh no, no, I agree. But the thing is, the the, the problem is just to finish it then quickly yeah. is that. The a I think they do, mate. Honestly, the the Labour Party in my country, the left in my country has become though. entirely socialist. The, the no, but Bell Hooks, like I, I don't think Bell Hooks wanted to take private property away. It's like yeah, there, she there is an overlap. Yeah, she was. Was she? Yes. Okay, my bad. She was absolutely a communist. That's that's the thing because the, as soon as you go down the line of reasoning, you you find that the liberals can only like the the people who are like intersectional feminists but not communists which and i've seen people say this in the chat they met them. yeah you have met them but at one point they're going to have to start standing on their liberal principles or they're going to end up losing the argument to communists which just makes them communists if they end up agreeing that the communists are right then they become communists um but the, the point the is they've got to start hang on, they, they've got to stand on these liberal principles and that will roll them back from being a feminist eventually they, they, they will find themselves and i get I, I speak to so many people who are like yeah i i used to be in this and man like i just realized i couldn't go along with it and it's like why couldn't you go along with it well because it was just intolerable and it's like <laughs> why is it intolerable you obviously don't actually agree with the way they're doing things because you hold a different set of principles fundamentally but you thought you were doing the right thing and you've got to the point now where you know you're not doing the right thing <laughs> you know? someone in the chat asked something really interesting who is the minority that always changes and i believe there was an article where it pointed out that uh, white christians are becoming a minority in the united states and what the the sjw's were saying it's like oh but even though they're a minority they're still dominating the culture so they're still oppressive and it's like okay so even when you have the evidence that they're a minority you will still not cease your ideological bigotry against them because this is not majority versus minority it's just like fuck white people that's it's your revenge mantra. it's revenge because th this is the whole thing about marxism is and i've seen so many sjw say this and, and it, it comes from it's the, hatred the, towards the rich not compassion for them. exactly exactly it's revenge it's about it's about equaling the scores you know it's about it's about treating the working class or the the oppressed group as people who need to have a victory over the oppressor yeah, let, let, let's go back to the gun control because I think people well, are leaving because we. Do well, no, that's that's fine. We're, the, I'm, I, we're going to stop anyway, won't we? But like, so I know I know we've just got esoteric and shit there. Sorry, about <laughs> that, but, but the, 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 these already... are important things. They're they're important distinctions. I know they seem I, really petty, but the, I, I I would love I to have this important. debate with you uh, whenever you're free. Yeah, I, we, we'll have it again another time. Man. It's very interesting. Was, uh, I, I've had to go through a lot of this stuff. And it was interesting. I didn't know that the um, I, I have actually been putting off reading about the post. No, it's, it's hard death. to find someone that understands communist ideology so you can talk about the difference yeah. between cultural Marxism and actual Marxism. Most people think it's the same, and it's not. Yeah. See, li li listen to this, right? So I'm going to be acute and pathetic. Nobody of importance wants Marxism and SJW stuff. Dumb leftist youth are irrelevant anyway. Dude, you're, you're just fucking wrong. You are you are so fucking wrong if you think nobody of importance wants Marxism and SJW stuff, you just do not know what you're talking about. Uh, well, I can point it out. Uh, if you go to Google, the, the people who are at yeah. the higher top, they are openly Antifa, right? Antifa is anarcho-communism. If you think yeah. that the people who are at Google, a company that has access to your emails, your passwords, your bank accounts and shit like that, aren't important, I don't know what to tell you. The, 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 the labor... Um, uh, Dude, my Jeremy government Corman. is run along SJW principles. You're not allowed to offend brown people in my country. Yeah, Jeremy we have Corman laws is, against it. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn goes to communist rallies. And, and you know what's really scary? If I go around with the swastika, of course people are going to treat me like a piece of shit, if not outright address me. If I go around with a hammer and sickle, no one gives a fuck. You know, this is why it's scary, because you don't have freedom of speech. Some ideas go unchallenged. Um, right, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna return to the super chat. I'm gonna get these done. Sorry, guys. Um, and please stop sending. <laughs> yeah, please stop sending them. So I, I can because it, it's it's one thirty in the morning here. I'm, I'm tired. 
Don't give um, him money. <laughs> um, so left uh, studies in electrical engineer left liber liberalism after Game Gate. Yeah, I understood. Uh, a lot of people did because fucking hell. And when you say liberal, you mean progressives, I'm sure. Like right wing engineers in the house. <laughs> American pro gun advocate. Ask me anything. Uh, class action lawsuit hit Facebook potential six billion. Oh really? I have to look that up. Facebook is really under fire lately. Yeah, yeah, they're getting absolutely fucking hammered. And the thing is, it's not to our benefit either. You know, oh. they, they, they're going to be coming for us <laughs> inevitably. It's like, for fuck's sake. Maybe there's going to be many Facebooks popping up. Well, it's going to have to be. I mean, my, I've, I, I, I'm glad Minds exists because it's a reasonable sized platform that does something similar. Maybe MySpace or, or a High Five at MySpace is going to become a thing again. Wow, well, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe, who knows? But whichever ones spring up, my God, I hope they're run by people who aren't just. No, they have to be. It's it's pressure. It's like, oh, you don't have a diversity council? Why not? Oh, you're a sexist, racist bigot. We're not yeah, going to do business. That's with the you. point. They have to start making moral arguments against these things and morally grandstanding on their principles against doing SJW stuff. They have to. They absolutely have to. They have to say, look, this, you know, with freedom of speech, this is a fundamental bedrock of any uh, de democracy, liberal democracy. It's what keeps it liberal. You know, yep. if, if you can't. In, you know, if you can't stand to have this, then you become a tyrannical state, in my opinion. It's, you know, and, and we have a moral duty to stand up against tyranny. Therefore, we are going to have the most gross speech on our platform, whether you like it or not, because this point of principle now, you fucks. So I said cultural Marxism equals trap word equals hollow the word. <laughs> well, prove him wrong. That's what I say. <laughs> 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 My God has abandoned me. Um, Let's read worse for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, banning firearms is pointless. P check the PA Looty case files. He produced a book on how to build an SMG with a license in the UK. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't know that. And the thing is, with 3D printing coming in and whatnot, I mean, it might it just might not be possible to stop people from actually getting guns if they want. If you can download the blueprints of a gun off the internet, which I'm sure you'll inevitably be able to do if you can't already do it, then printing off the gun, it's really not going to be that difficult. Um, so let's grant the premise that guns in America get picked up, legal and otherwise. Don't criminals have networks to smuggle all sorts of contraband into the country? Yeah, but that's the laws don't work argument. Um, I can listen to all three of you geniuses all night. Okay, don't be sucky. <laughs> Bravo, I'm just kidding, George. Um, guns started in the 1500s, and now people have mini mills and 3D printers. Can we make it my home? Yes, there we go. Uh, no gun violence in cities. Uh, no, the gun violence in cities stems from selling drugs like bootleggers in the 1920s. Yeah, a lot of it is. A lot of it is uh, funded. Gang well, basically, these gangs are funded by drugs. Uh, if you make the drugs legal, then the gangs aren't funded. Um, yes, V is right in large town cities. I've had cameras on us all the time. Um, there you go. Arch, I am Norwegian, and it turns out we have fences now. Oh, my God. Oh, there you go. See, this is what I say. Why, why don't I people believe me? I mean, maybe we have it in this country. I just don't go to the why schools. people believe me? Yeah, that's the shit. It's like... Well, no, we have fences, actually, obviously, but... <sighs> um, Bull Moose, on the 5th of March, my high school suffered a school shooting threat. As I was there, I'd like to press some... I'll even uh, tell you why there's fences. It's because school is becoming more and more insufferable, so people try to skip school. So instead of finding out how to make school more bearable, they're just raising fences and they're they're being authoritarian twats. Maybe. I'm, on, honestly, I think it's in our schools the other way around. I mean, our schools have are fairly well funded, mm. so they have fancy equipment in them. So I think a lot of them have fences to keep people from stealing stuff. <clears throat> um it's not so much the right's anti-environmentalism, it's they see climate change as a power play by the left wing. Totally agree. And it's, it's really annoying because like, I don't know about the, the science of it or anything, and I, I just don't care. But like, being anti-pollution, that's something I can agree with on the face of it, obviously. <laughs> so like, there, there is good work that can be done, but it gets trapped in the political argument. Someone in the US, we have fences with spikes. I can't believe it. Barbed wire, I would suggest. And if five people want to skip school, one should just throw themselves over the barbed wire so <laughs> the other four can climb over. Uh, please come to Fort Worth, Texas, USA. It isn't a desert here. I want to support you in person. It's a lovely place. Crowd of visits a lot. Um, I, I'm sure I will at some point in the future, dude. Uh, in these divisive times, I have to ask, ask the most important question. Who would you rather bang? A super ugly chick or a super hot trap? Super ugly chick. Wow, that's really transphobic, V. Yes. 
<laughs> this is the healthy mindset, the Eastern European mindset. If I say that, I could end up literally be guilty of committing a hate crime. So no, I, I, I'm legally obligated to bang a super hot trap. It's <laughs> fucking terrible. I believe the government's legally yeah, okay. forcing you, you me to. If the government forces you to be a faggot, that, that's... <laughs> Look, like now I've, I've suddenly found myself on the traps aren't gay side of the argument. See, what, what I think is that you could have <laughs> said it's like, I have a wife, so I can't choose. But you did want... In principle, we're talking, obviously. I see, yes. yes. I mean, I could start bringing the fact that obviously I'm a married man, so I'm not going to... Obviously, yes. Yeah. But then people are like, yeah, but that's the only reason, isn't it? I'm like, no, because <laughs> in principle... But, oh, well, you know. eh. um, Sargina. Why do non-Americans care about gun control? Honestly, because you guys talk about it a lot. Otherwise, I wouldn't talk about it. Um, the reason people keep blaming guns and not the men and boys misusing them is because males are disposable in our society. The reason they no only notice the gun is because, to them, nothing is holding it. You know, I I, I don't know if that's true. I, but, it, I mean, it, it is... I, I think it is linked to men and boys being disposable. Um, but I don't... I, I think that if if they say that there is something inherently different between men and women, then... They've got a lot of answering to do. You know, they've got a lot to answer for there. Someone um, asked Blair White or Christy Winters. I would bounce those Christy Winters titties like there's no tomorrow if the opposition, if the other choice was Blair White. Legally obliged to say. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, I, th I don't think it's necessarily a men and boys thing. To be honest, I, I, I no, the invisible thing. Um, I, I do think it's that they. They, they can't fucking bring themselves to say it, though. But um, should welfare recipients and or people who don't pay income tax be denied the right to vote until they contribute? Also, why is V so ugly? Oh, that's not very nice. Um, but I am ugly. No, that, that is accurate. I don't know. I saw the, the video of you from like 10 years ago where you're advising people on how to pick up girls. You're a handsome young man. Why, thank you. What happened? Pizza. <laughs> That is literally what happened. Pizza and the European Union. Like I just read an article that the Eastern Europe is getting only junk from from meat products and shit like that. And this is why when I went to Britain, I thought it's the best food ever, like the most heavenly food on earth. And then people say British food is awful. And I'm like, really? I should come to Eastern Europe. Well, I mean, nice, nice one for managing to blame that on the EU. <laughs> Well, it's, I'm it's, ugly because of the EU. I, I didn't change my lifestyle. It's the exact same lifestyle I had then. So what else can it be? Is it you're getting older? I don't know. And is getting older means getting fatter? Yeah, I think it does. All right, then yeah, it's yeah. it's the EU and me getting older. It's still the EU's fault. I like it. Um, <laughs> Look, blissful sparrow. Get, getting back adorable. to the actual question. Uh, should welfare recipients don't, do do don't pay income tax be denied the right to vote until they contribute? Dude, like I, I'm I'm getting radical on suffrage and not along like gender or racial lines. <laughs> I mean, I, this is why Starship Troopers has been fascinating me so much recently because, like, the idea of getting suffrage is a fucking difficult thing to do. You have to earn your suffrage in that, and you know, service guarantees citizenship. And that, to me, I'm sat thinking, okay, a lot. I think a lot of the the gridlock that's causing our political system is tribal voting. You know, and it's like, okay, if you want to be tribal, that's fine, but should you be voting if it's just a tribal vote? You know, is is you're not you're not getting an informed political dialogue there. And what if you're going to get tribal service? What do you mean, sorry, say again? Oh, well, like let's say a specific minority will be more likely to perform service, so they will become citizens, and uh, whites will become a minority in their own country. Well, because... the, the the that's the thing. It's the class privilege of being citizens that will bind them together more yeah, than. And and what if whites don't care about being a citizen that they will only have like minorities like Muslims going to the military and get citizenship? Well, a I mean I don't think you can do this on a national level. Oh, it needs to be global. Yeah, I think so. I th I think there's a reason that Heinlein. Uh, but even then, like it. you would have like some really warlike countries that have people who want to become citizens there. Okay. And uh, yeah, but they, you've still got bills of rights and stuff. You can't yeah, just they, enact they the tyranny change. of a majority or a minority. That's true. But they might try to change those bill of rights um, because if they, if they become an overwhelming majority. Yeah. Okay. So what do you do about that? I would not literally, have... everyone is entitled to become a citizen. That is true. If they're if they're literally a group of people like yeah okay we're gonna we're gonna do this you'd be like okay well I'll just go and yeah, dig fucking have, trenches would, for two years everyone yeah. will just has to go dig for trenches for two years 
I would have propaganda encouraging people to become citizens. That's what I would do. Well, they do. I would treat non-citizens with disrespect and disdain. Kind of. And it would be a cultural class thing. But seriously, I, I can see the argument for having uh, citizenship be something you have to earn. You know, I mean, I'm not suggesting military service, but maybe. Well, and yeah. and uh, if you're mentioning what uh, the Starship Troopers, it wasn't just military. Um, you could, have, for instance, become a human guinea pig for mm -hmm. new experimental well, drugs. You didn't even have to do that. You could just, you know, get a civil service job doing something yeah. shit. You know, and, and for democracies that aren't at war, yeah, you you would not enter a lot of military. Yeah, you'd enter a lottery. So no, no, it's not necessarily a lottery. It's no, actually... the civil, the civil one. Um, the, oh, right. the military guarantees citizenship, but if you wanted to enter like civil citizenship, you you would enter a lottery, and every month you'd have new name. So you could. It's, it's a lot more like the Roman Republic, and and this is the thing people compare it to fascism, but it's like I'm going to do a video on this because it's actually like anti-fascism, uh, <laughs> like like the opposite because fascism is about compulsion, uh, whereas it, in Starship Troopers, the the idea is. It's anti-compulsion. The compulsion is to get you to leave. <laughs> like, no, no, seriously. Seriously, the whole fucking thing. You are literally, you are encouraged to quit any time you feel like quitting. Just get out. You don't get another chance, but you can get out whenever you fucking like. And it's the point is to make you stick it out. And it, it is an extreme radical meritocracy. It's which you know it, it's not corrupt like fascism is. Out centrist, out liberalist. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> yes, hey, <laughs> basically, and so I'm, I'm like looking at people are like, oh, this is this is a fascist movie. It's like no, it's a militaristic movie, but it's not fascist. You're right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, right. And this one, I'm gonna do a video on it. You're yeah, wrong on cultural Marxism, but you're right. I'm not on no, this. but you didn't disagree with me on cultural Marxism. That's the thing. We need to have this discussion when we have more. Time. We we will we will. But I'm I'm right on that. I swear. I, I'm I'm not so excited about it. Well, if you swear, then I might be wrong. I I'm I've I will go through it another time when I'm less tired. But anyway, um, check out Forbes' review of Far Cry Five, crying that it is too apolitical and not bashing conservatives. <laughs> Even if it was wildly political. I'm sure it wouldn't be bashing "quote unquote" conservatives, you know. It would be bashing the Westboro Baptist Church, which everyone, even conservatives, do. So, like, shut up, Forbes. Um, <laughs> read super chats. Yes, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Um, if the military knew they were about to violate the Second Amendment, there'd be a huge amount of insubordination. I agree. I think there probably would be. To be fair. I know a bunch of people have said this, but I mean, like, they, like broadly, I think that would be. But there are going to be groups in there that do that. They'll, they'll go along with it. Um, throw the tea in the harbor. That's a hate crime. V, I want my McNuke. V, why can't they have a McNuke? I don't know, but why is there a Sargon is a relevant guy in the chat? Because <laughs> I'm irrelevant. <laughs> why have the name after me? <laughs> He's invoking the Enoch. You should invoke the Halsey. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, so what, what? Yeah, but seriously, why shouldn't people have McNukes? Um, because it, uh, okay, uh, the, uh, it is such a danger to the public that the restriction of liberty is understandable in this position. So you should have gone for a market answer. Uh, what what would be? Know, the I actually, th answer. I actually think they should be legal, but they're going to be so goddamn expensive. No one's going to be. It's, able not, to it's not. It's not only that, but even if they're legal and let's say you make a mistake you tinker with it then you have radioactive waste in the entire neighborhood wow are you saying that the government should oppress me by preventing me from being able to turn my neighborhood into a radioactive wasteland yeah, but here's the thing if if <laughs> if they were legal at one point someone would start the kickstarter campaign and they would actually start to own a nuke wow like people would pitch in i you, guess you the might... american government should watch its back <laughs> Fucking statist. No, I, I'm not. I'm not like a hundred percent for liberty. You no, know, I understand. No, no. I, I know. I agree. I agree. Realistically speaking, yeah, yes. No, for instance, if you want, like, there's biological weapons that are very cheap. They're cheap, and why can't you own, you know, a bomb that spreads Ebola or some shit? I don't know. Mm. Uh, sorry, the the Matt man just said the book was not, but the movie was crap and portrayed the world as Naziist. You know, I, I actually don't even agree with that, mate. I know that the I know that um, what was the guy who directed Paul Verhoeven. I know that he was trying to do that. He wanted to make it look fascist. But the thing is, by following the book, you can't really make it fascist. I mean, 
I'll I'll go into it. I'll go I'll go into it in a, in the video. It's actually really ironic how he fucked up trying to portray it as fascism because if that's fascism, holy shit, that makes fascism look amazing. <laughs> like, right, it's, it's not, you know. Anyway, if that's fascist. Then everyone should be a fascist. God damn it. Yeah, but that's not what fascism was. <laughs> if fascism was not a successful economy, you know. This is the thing. I, I'll I'll go through it. I'll go through it. Um. Anyway. Um, half all vets own guns. Good luck with that ban. Yeah, I, it's not, I don't think it should happen, and I don't think it is going to happen. So, and I, I think that the the activists who are going around parading around like moral fucking gods among men, I think they're just going to make people hate them. And they they'd be they uh, the thing is, I think they're being radicalized by the people who are handling them, you know, as well. And like, is this David Hogg guy? Like the way he's talking about the NRA, as if the NRA are, are sanctioning these mass murders. Like the NRA are coming out with a banner every time there's a mass murder, going, you know, we support Anders Breivik 100%. We support, you know, whatever, whoever's doing it, you know, as if this, like, this was a great day, like that ISIS. <laughs> it's like, fucking... I hate that. I hate the attitude. I hate the attitude. Um, so, uh, you guys need to demand a constitution for the UK. Cultural Bolshevism is what caused the Holocaust. It's quite interesting that you don't have a constitution for the UK. We we do. We have an unwritten constitution. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Humanity managed to find out writing a long time ago. <laughs> you should put it in writing. It is actually in writing. Uh, so okay. it, w- what it means is it's not a codified constitution. Okay. So the unwritten constitution is in writing. Okay. But yeah, I mean, like it's a it's a series of like uh, legal precedents and things like this. You know? Please please stop your low IQ interruptions now. Okay, but that's what it is. And so, <laughs> I but, know, I know. I'm just pulling your leg. Yeah, but the, the, that is legitimately what it is. So it's it, it's it's like a living constitution. I think. It's a living constitution. Okay. No, it is. It's it's always being changed. But I mean that that's not necessarily a good or bad thing. I, I'm probably bad. I think I probably it's a bad really. thing. I will give you a hint. Well, no, 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 no. The thing is, it it wouldn't be too bad if we could, for example, add to it by adding some sort of free speech clause or whatever you know some something that became canon within it as, as it were and i don't know how that i don't no, know how the do country that. with the free speech corner kind of titles a lot of other free speeches yeah i know it's fucking atrocious man it's it's genuinely like i i just can't go over how bad it is in my country and before <laughs> someone actually gets arrested for saying something in the free speech corner <laughs> <sighs> there are even restrictions there, man. Yeah, you can't have a megaphone. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, cultural Bolshevism caused the Holocaust. Thanks for that. Um, if Brits ever create a constitution, make sure to restrict government and corporations so you don't have Google effectively taking away your rights. That's another good point. And uh, Louis, Louis Levi always goes on about this, doesn't he? Where he's, what was he watching? Uh, it's some conservative town hall, and they were just say, sat there saying, "Google and YouTube and and Facebook and Twitter are oppressing us. This is the government's fault." And I say, "Yeah, it's not always the government's fault, man. <clears throat> you know, it's, sometimes it is someone else." Um, hey, Saga, if you ever make it to the Midwest and and near Chicago or Indi- Indianapolis, just try seeing if you can get an event at Purdue University. Um, okay, thanks. I'll 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 look into it or and stuff. I'm, I'm, I I I I have actually. Um, Ask some people to try and arrange a live show in the US. Um, so that could be interesting, I guess. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to it. I like doing the live shows, they're fun. And it, there's there's a lot of energy, isn't there? Oh, you haven't done them yet, have you? Because the one we were going to do got cancelled. No, I haven't. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the one we we're going to do got cancelled. Um, but, uh, but I'll get you over for other ones, man. You know, I'm I'm trying to rearrange at the moment, but fucking fear of Antifa, what are you gonna do? So it's again it totally cucked, man. I have done nothing wrong in this regard. Um hey, Sargon, if you ever make it to the Midwest, uh, I'm this oh no, you just read one. I just read the one. Uh, Aquabus, the AR fifteen of uh, the AR yeah, fifteen of the fifteen hundreds. Have you ever looked at identi- identity politics in Northern Ireland? It has some similarities with what's going on elsewhere. Yeah, I bet it does, man. I haven't I haven't got the time to go into I that. wish. But I'm I'm absolutely convinced it's exactly the same. Um Sargon, you're wearing a red coat at the Patriots Day Parade. That's... See you there, line boy. Hey man, game white pants good. You better turn up, dude. But um I, I won't be wearing a red coat. The thing is like this is the thing. People forget that like 
I would have been one of, I would probably have been one of the revolutionaries <laughs> during the American Revolution. I don't know. Cuck. Time. cuck. <laughs> what? You cuck. What you, how is that like, being cuck? So would you would you be a cuck to an absolute monarch, would you? If the absolute monarch is spreading white people all over the world, as you put it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean there's still a continent that I can manifest destiny. I, I, I suppose, but I don't need to be a cuck of this guy to go and <laughs> cuck those people over there. Okay, yeah, but the shit is already built there. A good life is already built there. Why would you go into the savage lands of the, the new continent? Glory? <sighs> okay, okay. No, no, I, I would fight you. I would be with Jim on his imperialist crusade, oh, like he wants to be an imperialist. Okay, well that's fine. I'll I'll fucking I'll be signing a declaration of independence. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, if it wasn't for the French, you wouldn't. So well, exactly. exactly. So you, you look, you you even have to put aside your animosity with the French. Well, I'll do that temporarily until we won the revolution, and then they'll go back to hating the French. <laughs> Um, which is still legal in Britain, instead. <laughs> well, not if they're French Muslims, is not. Well, yeah, but the, the important part isn't that the French uh, <laughs> nukes are not discriminate weapons. That's my counter, at least. That's actually a really good counter as well. Um, the reason I say throw the tea in the harbor is because there was an act of defiance that we said no, we won't take this shit anymore. Yeah, but dude, there are some lines you just don't cross. You could have thrown anything in the harbor. I would have been less offended if you'd thrown British people in the harbor. <laughs> I mean, they can swim, you know. <laughs> Free speech. You know what's funny? Sarah, Sarah is on the same position as you here. It's like, hey, don't fuck with the tea. Yeah, but it's property, mate. Property rights. No, You're fucking the same okay, property. out of all the property, it seems that the tea matters the most. Yeah, that's a spiritual thing, but it's the, the sensible <laughs> thing is the property rights. Spiritual is because <laughs> <laughs> okay, so throwing people is fine because it's not property. But if they were slaves, well, they are property, but they can swim. Yeah, but if they're slaves, then they they are legitimately property and tools, and therefore that that would be as bad as throwing the tea. Yeah, I agree. Throwing throwing slaves into a harbor is also unfair. <laughs> but again, most of, I mean, they, I don't know if they can swim or not, but like it was beautiful. I say ruin soup. I'm fucking blocking you. How do I do this? <laughs> 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 they had to find that two percent tax on tea. Then, yeah, dude. I always, do you know, what I love going back and hearing about these arguments because if if you go back and look at the amount of money they were being taxed on, it was fuck all. It was two percent. Yeah, yeah. It was an absolutely tiny, tiny amount. I, said, think, wow. I think it was a pretext rather than the, an actual. Yeah, it revenue. was. Yeah, yeah. The, these guys were standing on principle, fucking firmly. I was like, wow, that's impressive. You know, I, that's why there were a lot of Americans that were loyal to the British and fought against the revolutionary. Hmm. People don't talk about them. But, but it's really interesting. So basically, I think that the Americans just wanted independence and they were looking for shit to blag about and complain about. Do a show somewhere like American Airlines Arena or City of Phoenix Stadium. Duck this college crap. Jesus Christ, I can never sell out some fucking stadium. Who knows? Yeah. Like 200, how many 200 person venue or something. That's funny. How many people do you think would turn up if I, I you had our limited seats? Oh, I don't know, man. Oh. Probably not that many. Should we end it here? We should probably end it here. But, I, uh, I yeah, have one request. The chats, by the way. Can, can you put our channels in the description? Because there were a lot of people who wanted yeah, yeah, to see yeah, yeah. it. Just send me send me links on Skype and I'll, uh, I'll yeah. do it. So, so guys, if, if you like me, Arch and Devil, there's going to be links in the description. I will, our I will channel. put them in there, yeah. You, you should check them out. They're all good channels. Mine especially is the best shit ever. To be fair, you've been putting in the work recently. Which putting the work. I, by the way, Sargon was nagging at me. It's like, I put was. in the work, put in the work, and I put in the work. And indeed, I'm starting to get positive subscriptions. I told you, man. You get bogged down in drama, and people just aren't interested. And I don't blame them, because I wouldn't be interested either. You know, I just like, I, you're not giving them any information. You're giving them drama. And if they're not interested in drama, then fucking why would they come? Uh, yeah, it's it's about the normies. Like the trauma is useful for our clique. It's like an internal stuff. But if you want to attract people from the outside, you have to to do things that yeah. basically my mom would watch. Yeah, and we've we've got to fucking speak to people outside of our echo chamber, haven't we? Yeah, you know, and that's. It, I think it's imperative that we start sort of spreading these ideas. 
So for instance, the video, uh, Romanian media embarrassed themselves over Kekistan was the funniest shit ever. Like, do you understand that your joke reached my country? <laughs> and, and there's this, this, this old man that's a political analyst saying, and like, yeah, Kekistan, they're uh, this uh, anarchist uh, cabal, which is uh, anti, cabal. yeah, yeah, they're anti-Jewish, uh, neo-Nazis, uh, anti-Semitic, uh, anti-black and uh, far right. And, I was like, what the fuck is this guy smoking? It takes two minutes to find it on Google. <laughs> well, uh, I, I guess that we've really um, we've really started something that's gone beyond our control. Oh, my God. Uh, it, was, it was just a shit post. <laughs> and generally, it was just for shit posters to recognize other shit posters. Yes. You know, and, and the thing is, I didn't even start the thing. I didn't coin the term or anything. But I, I mean, no, I no, no. It was, it was just something that, I mean, I guess it's easy to create something called Keck and then make it sound like a foreign country. I, by I, made, a, I, I made a video about the history of uh, the Kekistani meme, and uh, everyone who watched this is quite accurate. But basically, yeah, it, it existed on 4chan, but it's when you went and found on the government website on the UK mm -hmm. that you can just write your own ethnicity. And you said, you know, well, there's people that have a Jedi religion. Why not just have a Kekistani ethnicity? Because then you can claim oppression. Yeah, and the way I, mean, I yeah, I don't the, read the chance, but someone put in the chat, Kekistan will be in history books. So that's probably true. The way I view it, <laughs> at least no, in the, the, sub, the, like the, the way I view it is when Christians were uh, the dominant culture, uh, they would uh, demand certain favors because they were religious and atheists couldn't get them. So what atheists did is to mock Christianity by having the flying spaghetti monster. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, look, we're religious as well. So we should have the same favors. And now that it's identity politics and people say, oh, I am this, therefore I need to, or I deserve. And it's like, well, okay, I'm a Kekistani and therefore I need this and that I deserve. Yeah, so it's, there, there was a legitimate need for something. Yeah, it's, it's a similar mockery of mm. the cultural zeitgeist that was the flying spaghetti master, which is the flying keck master now. Should we make this a thing, the flying keck master? <laughs> no, you don't need to do anything like that. This this thing is out of our hands, man. Like this this, it, and that's fine. But anyway, um, I'm gonna uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stop it. Cause it's two o'clock in the morning now. Um, it was but, awesome though. Yeah, I've, it's been nice to be able to just have a chat, isn't it? Because I mean, like, so many times, like people say something, and then you get people like flipping out and be like, right, okay, you you're at, like not every statement is a treatise, you know. It's like sometimes it's just good to think things through. And yeah. yeah, I mean, I'll be reading the comments. It'll be interesting to see what people say about stuff. But I honestly, I to sum up for people who like haven't been here from the beginning, um, yeah, I, I I don't think that the government does have the right to infringe on people's ability to own guns to the point where they can't own guns. Um, I you know obviously regulation is important for you know for various people and the thing is i'm sure most regulation is actually fairly sensible so you know i think enforcing those regulations is important but i mean i don't see the argument for getting rid of guns entirely we my have done that in europe my, my closing statement is going to be what uh, a liberalist should do which is an activist for classical liberalism uh first of all you should find five other people and inform them of this like five friends that aren't interested in politics and just tell them Number two would be to educate yourself, read why America has the right to own a gun. Like these are conversations that were held by your ancestors and they knew the arguments. And unfortunately, you'll have to relearn them again uh, because you will be pressured and you will have to make them. And finally, um, make sure that you know which co corporations and which companies are sponsoring these uh, movements. And again, tell five other people about these corporations and companies and stop purchasing things from them. These corporations said that right-wingers are unhinged, according to Vice. If you actually buy from these corporations, I think that, yeah, you are unhinged. Can you understand that it's a new way of doing politics now? If corporations become political and they don't want to sell to the public at large and they take political opinions, then, uh, you know, support the ones that support your political opinions and boycott the ones that don't. Well, that's a really good piece of advice in general there, man. I mean, good job. That's, that was really useful stuff. Thank you.
that 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 will that will make someone an effective activist for the cause that they're interested in. This is how I get your channel banned. I make it useful. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, take it easy, everyone. Bye. See ya.